Claudino's Auto Repair, located at 310 South Main Street in Attleboro, is celebrating 26 years in the auto and truck repair business. Over the years, John Claudino and his team of mechanics have worked to build a long-lasting rapport with their customers. From oil changes to diagnostics, transmissions, and routine maintenance on foreign and domestic cars and trucks, Claudino's will keep your vehicle running. Claudino's Auto Repair, 508-226-8545 or at claudinosautorepair.com. Join the ARC of Bristol County on September 24th from 8.30 to 11 for their annual ARC Strong Run, Walk, and Roll event. You're invited to have fun, dress up in costumes, and bring your friends, all to benefit the ARC of Bristol County. Registration is now open, and to register, visit www.raceentry.com. For more information, you can contact Deb Kirby via email at dkirby at arcnbc.org or by phone at 508-226-1445, extension 3136. On September 24th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., the Friends of the Attleboro Animal Shelter will host the Harvest Fest, their biggest event of the year. The Harvest Fest will feature over 70 vendors and several hundred attendees. Dogs are welcome, but must be up to date on vaccinations and on a leash. Dogs should be comfortable in crowds, okay with loud noise, and good around other animals. For more information on the Harvest Fest, you can visit faaspets.org or call 774-203-1862. On Wednesday, September 21st at 6.30, Brianna Serratis, Attleboro's Poet Laureate, will lead an interactive poetry session based on themes from the book Sitting Pretty. The event will take place in the Attleboro Public Library's Balfour Room and be part of the city's Big Read programming. Prepare for a night of conversation and performance. To register for the event, you can call the library at 508-222-0157. Falls AC, 8-Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Opened in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC, 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. Crystal Glass, 110 North Main Street in Attleboro, has supported local high school sports for many years. Crystal Glass has been chosen for glass replacement projects for home and business for over 60 years. From shower doors to auto glass and mirror replacement, Crystal Glass is ready to do the job. They accept most insurance plans and serve several communities around the Attleboro area. They're open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact them at 508-222-5810 and on the web at bristolglass.com. W.H. Riley is here when it comes to heating your home or business this winter. W.H. Riley & Son always welcomes new customers. They're a family-run business serving the Attleboro area since 1873. They offer heating oil and propane with 24-hour emergency service. For more information, you can contact them at 508-699-4651 or their website, whriley.com. W.H. Riley & Son, 35 Chestnut Street, North Attleboro, a company greater Attleboro residents have called on since 1873. Are you looking for meal options for you and your family? Consider Rico Subs and Pizza on Route 1 in North Attleboro, open since 1971 and a proud sponsor of high school sports in the Attleboro area. Rico's cooks up many flavors of pizzas, subs, and calzones, all in-store and using fresh ingredients. They're open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sundays 12 noon to 10 p.m. 
You can also order ahead by calling 508-695-1296. The public is invited to an open house at the brand new Atterborough High School building on Saturday, September 24th from 9 a.m. to noon. There will be tours around the building including general education and career and technical education classrooms. The public will also have access to the new gym, the cafeteria, the Robert H. Bray Auditorium, and the Media Center. Does your back hurt after a long night's sleep? Has your mattress seen better days? Is your current bedroom furniture a mixture of different furniture sets? The Bedding Center, located on Pleasant Street and proud sponsor of this radio station and high school sports, offers a wide array of mattresses along with beds, bedroom furniture, and odd-sized mattresses and box springs. You can reach them online at bedding-center.com or by phone at 508-226-8090. Good evening on a perfect early autumn evening, although it's technically summertime. Welcome to Tozer Cassidy Field as we get ready for the Attleboro Blue Bombardiers to face the crosstown rival Bishop Fian Shamrocks. Game number two under new Attleboro head coach Jim Winters. I'm Paul Healy along with big brother Michael Healy. And Mike, could it be a more beautiful night for a ball game? No, it absolutely can't, couldn't get any better than this. There's no humidity. It's got to be about 65 to 70 degrees. And Attleboro, after getting whacked by Fian last year, 34 yeah. zip. Yeah. They want this one in the worst way. Yeah. And then, of course, Fian just lost their opener to North Attleboro. 28 to 6. And I don't know if the game was as convincing a loss as the score sounds. Yeah. But it appears that they lost their quarterback and a little bit of their mojo, but they got their entire offensive line back, yep. good defensive front coming back. Yep. They got tailbacks coming back, this great slot receiver, kick returner, and kicker. Yep. And this this will be a true test for the Blue Bombardiers. Yeah, for Bishop Fian <laughs> under Coach Pinnabel in his fourth year. Uh, they were 8-3 and three last season. Uh, lost to uh, Redding, right, in the... In well, the I went to the game. Was, well, uh, they came back, though, behind by 28 to 9. Yeah. I think, or oh, 27 and 9. 25 think, to 9. They lost 25 23. That's right. Yeah. And they really, I mean, if they just had an awful start to the game. Yep. And Redding, you know, they've got a, a, a le legitimate D1 quarterback, Jim Murphy, yep. whose father was a great quarterback at Northeastern. So I just thought, you know, this would be a very, very tough. Yep. Uh, you know, opportunity, if, if you will, uh, yep. for Attleboro tonight. But after the way they started, I mean, remember last year, they beat Durfee in their opening game here. 10-7. On, on a, a goal line stand. Yep. And, of course, they were using a different quarterback early on before Matt Harvey came in, yep. I believe, in game three. Yep, game four is when he came on to start. And it really turned the team around. Exactly. It really turned the team exactly. around. Man, uh, Attleboro, again, as Mike said, they beat uh, Bishop, uh, they beat Durfee last season on opening night, 10-7 on a Salviati field goal. Right. As the uh, final buzzer went off. Last Friday night, they traveled to Durfee and whacked him 35-6. to Matt Harvey had four touchdown passes of 7 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, and 60 yards. And... Brody McKenna had a pick six in that game. Well, this this should be, you know, Attleboro is going to have the wide open spread attack. Yep. We know Bishop Fien is a 20th century I formation team, yep. which is my vintage. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we've had a couple of times uh, yep. we've seen where Attleboro's had a tremendous difficulty handling that old fashioned I attack off tackle. Right. I remember a few years ago over over at At Fien, their, their tailback ran for 265 yards. Yeah. Was that three years ago? That was, what, it was three years ago. Yeah, because last yeah. year the kid Yanchuk had, what, 11 carries for about 150 before he, uh, on the turf, he, he threw his left knee out. I, I don't know if he's bounced back from that or not. Well, he's a terrific tailback. Yeah, Yanchuk, again, he got injured in Attleboro's uh, the second game of the year. And uh, the Yanchuk family is a great family. His little, his big sister, she set the career goal, career record for goals for the girls' soccer team. She's now playing at Hartford. But Nick missed most of last year against North on opening night. He had 11 carries for 111 yards. But according to the starting lineup I got from the coaches, neither Nick, uh, Nicholas Yanchuk or Cam Burns is in the starting lineup. We don't know what's going on there. And Burns plugged in for him last year, and they almost didn't miss a beat. Exactly right. But for the Blue Bombardiers, Jim Winters in his first year, he coached two years at Silver Lake. 
Uh, he played his high school football under Jack Antonelli at Fox Martinelli. High School. Martinelli. Martinelli, excuse me, Jack. How, how can you forget Jack's really? last name? Jack Martinelli at uh, Foxborough High. And, Mike, we had uh, Jim Winters on my radio show today. Yes. Go ahead. Tell him how Martinelli recruited Jim Winters to play football. Well, he saw him in freshman gym class throwing the ball around. Sophomore gym class. Oh, sophomore gym class. Yes. And he came out. He never played football in his life. And he came out in the middle of his sophomore year, and by his junior year, we were starting. Actually, senior year is when he oh, was starting. That's when he, he was the backup started. quarterback with uh, Chris Katie and the Warriors. Oh, the that's Warriors. right. They had that great team. Yeah, won the uh, Super Bowl at uh, Gillette's uh, Schaefer Stadium back then. And he got the bug for football, and he's never lost it. And here come the Blue Bombardiers. The Blue Bombardiers, the good news is they had over 90 kids come out for the program this year. Uh, they had to beg, borrow, and steal, Coach Winters said, to get enough helmets and yes. uh, shoulder pads for the JV and freshman teams, but over 90 kids on the roster. Steve Harvey is back at quarterback. Salviati back as a wideout and defensive back. Aiden Ramirez, Adrian Rivera, Cole McKenna, Aiden Hawkwater, Brody McKenna. All but, of these kids are back and played serious football yeah. last year. The problem is... Whoops. We'll be right back after this on 1320 WARA and AACS TV. Crystal Glass, 110 North Main Street in Attleboro, has supported local high school sports for many years. Crystal Glass has been chosen for glass replacement projects for home and business for over 60 years. From shower doors to auto glass and mirror replacement, Crystal Glass is ready to do the job. They accept most insurance plans and serve several communities around the Attleboro area. They're open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact them at 508-222-5810 and on the web at bristolglass.com. Falls AC, 8 Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Opened in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC. 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. Welcome back to AACS 15 TV and WARA Radio. Paul Healy along with Michael Healy. <laughs> Dave Angel on camera, Peter Bray running our graphics, Jim Jones, our engineer in charge. We're getting ready for the 1-0 Attleboro Blue Bombardiers after a 35-6 victory over Durfee to take on the 0-1, surprisingly, Bishop V and Shamrocks. They were knocked off by North 28-6. Mike, we were telling a radio audience, Attleboro may be as strong as anyone in the Hockamock League in the skill positions. And again, the Hockamock League, there are seven teams in the Kelly Rex division Five of them are in the Boston Globe's top 16 teams. Well, the, the only two that aren't are Taunton, who's loaded in Attleboro. Yeah, the Taunton center just won the home run derby. And he was the kid who literally hit, hit the game-winning homer over Franklin yep. to win the state baseball tournament. Yep. And you've always heard me say center's a skilled, skilled position. position. And he's two-way center and nose guard for them. So they're going to be good this year. Speaking of centers, Isaiah Miranda, Attleboro's uh, senior, 5'10", 273-pound uh, center. He is their only returning lineman on either side of the ball. And that's the key up front because Fian is loaded up front. Yep. Logan Mankin's son, Case Mankins, is a D1 college prospect. Middle linebacker uh, Dante Bruschi is a, once again, he's Teddy Bruschi's son. I need not say anything more than that. Yeah, there is one more thing to say. What's that? Bruschi's also the long snapper. Is he? <laughs> I love that. And once again, they run a traditional 4-4 kind of defense. Yeah. They run a, I, I, I like the way they do things, yep. but I was stunned to see how much trouble they had with yep. North Attleboro. Not that, I mean, everybody has trouble with North Attleboro, yep. but I, they, they beat North, North Attleboro last, last year, year yep. and I thought they had a little more coming back this year right. than North Attleboro, and they had them at home. Attleboro's captain's out there, number two, Spencer Shirk, who is still out with a uh, broken collarbone. Hopefully he'll be back next week. 
Also out there, Isaiah Miranda, and number four, Anthony Salviati, the captains for Fian, who I believe have won the toss and they have deferred. Captains for Fian. Where are we here? Don't worry, we've got it. Uh, Bruski is one of the captains. Mankins, obviously, is one of the captains. Number 73, the right tackle, Eddie Sinell, is one of the captains. My apologies to, oh, there it is, and Nick Yanchuk, one of the captains as well. All four of those guys, I mean, Yanchuk got hurt, obviously, he missed most of his junior year, which is a shame. Yep. But every one of those kids is a terrific player. Attleboro coached by Jim Winters in his first year. He's 1-0. Uh, uh, Theon is coached by Brian Pinnabel in his fourth year. Again, they went 8-3 and three last year, made it all the way to the Division Three final where they lost to a tough Reading team, 25-23. If Attleboro can stay with the Shamrocks on the line of scrimmage, this should be one heck of a ball game. Well, they're going to run that spread offense, and once again, when you play in a 4-4 defense, which I played when I was a kid, yep. <clears throat> the play of the outside linebackers helping on underneath coverage and second contain if, if anybody gets outside is, is absolutely instrumental. Uh, but Which is exactly the comment that Coach Pinnabel had for the Sun Chronicle. Our ends have to set the edge. It's the truth. Yep. It's the truth. Attleboro, uh, Fia won the toss and they deferred. They will kick off left to right. Attleboro will receive their returners are number 22, Ethan Laco, number seven, Adrian Rivera, and number one, Aiden Pantages. By the way, Fiend is wearing white pants. They should be wearing their traditional gold. It's a better look. <laughs> it is, yep. makes them look like Notre Dame. Fiend, gold helmets, white jerseys, white pants, green numbers, gold, gold trim, Attleboro in their white helmets, royal blue jerseys, white pants. Great look. Yep. And kicking off for uh, Fian is number 12, Brett McCaffrey. By the way, Mike, you'll be happy to know when Attleboro kicks off, Jim Winter says they're going with deep kicks this year, not the bloops. I love it. And there is a deep kick. And this will be Ethan Laco at his own seven yard line. Hands it up, fakes the handoff across the 25 near the 30. Taken down, initial hit made by Bishop Fian's number eight, Devin Ferreira, also in there at Iovino. He was on about two yard line when he caught that? No, seven. Seven yard line. Okay, lost my head. Is it 21 yard return? Yeah. <laughs> Bombardiers take over at their own, we'll call it the 29 yard line. It'll be first and 10 as they travel right to left on a gorgeous fall evening. Here come the Bombardiers. Offensive line, sophomore Gray, 6'4", 254 is the left tackle. Dan Haste at 5'9", 199 is the left guard. He was the best lineman on the JV team the last two years. Very good player. Miranda, 5'10", 273, the only returning starter. Seniors at right guard and right tackle, Tatro and Fitzgerald. Spread offense. That's a lateral. pass. That's a live ball. And we could have a turnover on the first play as Aiden Rivera hustled for it. Adrian. And that is a turnover, a oh cover for Fian on a swing pass. Wow. I, I don't know who you give that to. I think uh, it was never caught. It was thrown behind him. He got his right hand on it, but it was just, uh, it's a dangerous play. Yep. What a break for the Shamrocks. Did not see who recovered that for Fian. There were only about 27 players over there. Wow, what a break. And Fian takes over first and 10 at the Bombardier 20 yard line. So that's a loss of nine. Wow. 11.45 on the clock, no score. Two tight ends. They're running right. Trying to see who that is with the carry. That's number 34, 34 on the carry. David Quinn, the tailback, a sophomore, 5'9", 170. So Yanchuk is not starting. Oh, Burns. Unless Burns is out there, too. I didn't see. Burns is number uh, two. Picked up three yards. Off right tackle. Yep. Nice job inside. Miranda had a hand on that. Yep. We, the linebackers for Attleboro were small, but they're quick and instinctive. Plus 17-yard line. Second down, seven yards to go. Get my notes right. Shotgun quarterback is Nick Iovino, a senior. 6'2", 175. Gives it to Bruski. Following a trap block running from right to left. Hit hard and the 
taken down, but he's got a first down inside the 10 yard line. Just a very simple play where he's lined up to the quarterback's right. Tight end was to the left side, just an old fashioned left power play. Yep. And he, geez, he picked up seven and the first down. So a guard wasn't pulling if it's a power. <laughs> nope. That was just reach and run. Yep, he's at the 10 yard line. Plus seven for Brewski. We'll give you the Shamrock offensive line in a second. And again, all five of them returning starters. Wide to the right is number three, Connor McHale. He's a good one, plays both ways. Same formation they used last play. Split backfield behind the shotgun Same quarterback. Play. Again, they give it to Brewski. Bounces through the Salviati, Salviati tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, wow. Bishop Fian. A minute and 32 seconds into this game. Boy, what a way to go. They ran the same play this time, and instead of taking the outside veer, he cut it straight up the middle. Salviati took him on yep. just outside the five, and Bruschi stayed low. Salviati tried to take him on low. Bruschi bounced off and went back to the inside wow. and drove into the end zone. Boy, oh boy, what a tough start with 10.28 to go in the first. So that drive was about a minute, 20 seconds, three plays, 20 yards. And doing the kicking for Fian is uh, McCaffrey. The long snapper is Brewski. Through the uprights, it is 7 0 Fian. 10.28 to go, first quarter. Well, that's an awful way to start the game. And uh, the only good thing I can say right now is they still got yep. 45 minutes to come back. Yep. And, and, but you can't do that. Yep. And this is the big thing we worried about. They came right defensively. You know, when you're running the risky play like that, yeah. it doesn't have to be a lateral. If the quarterback looks downfield yep. and gives his running back coming out to the flat time to get even with him, yeah. now he's catching the ball head up the field. Yeah. And he didn't give him that time. He rushed the play. And then, of course, after the fumble recovery, 20 yards on three carries yeah. and just power football. Salviati and Laco are back deep to receive this kickoff. McCaffrey's kick is going to be a little Short. bit shorter. We'll catch it in the air. Laco gets it on the bounce at his own 13. Comes up the right side. Got a nice block for number 30, Miranda. And he is out to the 30-yard line. I think it's about the 25-yard oh, line. We'll see. 12-yard return. Twenty. You gonna call that the twenty-six or the twenty-seven? Twenty-seven yard line. Yeah, okay. All right, it's a fourteen-yard return. Yep. Yeah. So the Bombardiers start their second possession at their own twenty-seven. First and ten. Ten twenty-three to go in the first quarter. They're heading right to left. Pistol formation. Tight bunch right. Rivera behind Harvey. Toss to the right. The left guard was pulling. He comes back to the left. Drilled out of bounds after a short game. Who made that hit? Big hit 26. by the Shamrocks, number 26, Shane Evans. I'll tell you, he made something out of nothing. They tossed it right, and the left defensive end, who I think was Mankin, just caved in the yep. side, and he just made a tight turn, somehow got back to the line of scrimmage. I think we'll give him one yard on that. So it's going to be second down, nine yards to go. Miranda, the senior captain over the ball. Now it's a bunch formation on the left side. That's the short side. Rivera but right behind the quarterback Harvey. Harvey steps up, throws deep. Salviati's out there, but the throw slightly overthrown on a post corner pattern. It's third and nine. Well, once again, you named the pattern yeah. and uh, you got to get it over the corner and you know, even though they're playing a 4-4-3, a they kind of rolled that way, and the yep. safety came over. A pass a little bit overthrown. Third, <laughs> that's yep. about the longest nine you're going to get. Yeah. Mankins is the defensive end. The other defensive end is Brendan Koss for the Shamrocks. The tackles are Tristan Upton and Reed, Clement, uh, Reed Clemente. Hackett and Bruschi, the inside linebackers. The outside linebackers are Evans and Ferreira. Defensive backfield, cornerbacks are Fassi and McHale. Safety is Connor McHale. Chad McHale is the cornerback. So they're running a 4-4-3. Mike, same defense we ran in high school. It's you know, Once again, it's been around, uh, well, Penn State made it famous, yeah. but it's actually a derivation of the original wide tackle six of Notre Dame 
which uh, was popularized about 90 years ago. Spread formation. Rivera goes in motion right to left. They throw over the middle to Salviati. High, incomplete punting situation for the Bombardiers. They ran the bubble screen to the left with Salviati's flanked out to the left. The tackle comes out and the near back comes out to try to lead. The pass to Tad High could have been caught, but it was not an easy catch. And now once again with 9.27 to go, Attleboro is going to be forced to punt from their own 28-yard line. Long snapper is Aiden Hawkwater. Laco is back there to punt. One man back deep for the Shamrocks, and I believe that's number two. Is that two, Cameron Burns, or is that three, Connor McHale? Well, last year was McHale. Yeah. Good kick. And it is McHale. Feels it at his own 38, drops it, does the wise thing, and falls on it at his own 36. And that's where the Shamrocks will take over, heading left to right with 9.22 to go, first quarter. It's a nice 35-yard punt, minus two on the return. It's just one of those things people forget. Most of the kids normally practice during the day. Yes. And this is dusk. Yeah. And the lights are bright. And the, it's even though it's a nice night, it's just yeah. very hard on the depth perception. Yeah. It's a lot easier to play during the day. Now it's Fian. Two wide outs to the right, one to the left. Two running backs on either side of the quarterback, Iavoni. Iavino, sorry. Iavino. Four-man front for the Bombardiers. They send five. Pass out into the right flat. Tackle made by number eight, Cole McKenna. Reception made by number 26 for Fian, Shane Evans. Gain of about, I'm going to call that three or four. Three, three yards. Just a little simple twist pattern. The wide out runs a post. They're trying to run a pick for him. And uh, the slot run comes outside. Yep. And that was number 26 who caught that pass? Yep. Three yard game. Shane Evans. So second down and three from the 30, well, that's the 34 actually. Back to pass. Has plenty of time as the Bombardiers only sent four. Rolling to his left, screaming up and making the hit is Brody McKenna, the middle linebacker. That's a loss. Boy, the quarterback had plenty of time to throw it away. He's a senior. I'm surprised he didn't, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we had plenty of time, and he had nothing. He took a hit. Wow, Brody McKenna came flying up. It was McKenna who had the pick six for the 36-yard touchdown last week. That's a loss of uh, three. It's going to be third and ten. Well, we didn't see this quarterback play at all last year, really. You know, he came in to hand the ball off, yep. you know, and he only completed two passes last game. Uh, I think Attleboro is going to come after these guys to stop this running attack, spread, it, spread formation yep. again. Press coverage on the outside. They throw underneath. It's complete underneath. Again, the completion is to Evans. Tackle by Salviati. That's short of first down yardage, though. They get out to their own third, uh, 42 yard line. And it's punt pun formation. They're out to the 42 yard line. It's funny, they did so much with the power the first time through. And they came out, and they came out in the spread with a, a split end one way, twins the other way, yep. two setbacks. And, uh, and they throw the ball out to the flat. It's fourth and a short five. Maybe it's four yards. Here comes the punt. Left to right. Again, McCaffrey Fair is the catch. punter. Fair catch made by Anthony Salviati. His two older one. sisters. One was an outstanding soccer player here at Attleboro. The other a superstar, Bella. So Bombardier's ball with 7.46 to go in the first quarter, moving right to left. I want to thank our sponsors, Clardino's Auto Body, the betting center in Attleboro, Rico's Pizza in North Attleboro, Bristol Glass on North Main Street in Attleboro, W.H. Riley and Son Mike. They've been around since 1874. And our new uh, sponsor this fall, Falls AC, also in North Attleboro. They needed plenty of AC this summer, that's for sure. All right, Attleboro, let's get it going. We've got the pistol formation going here with two tight punches either side. Old 30-yard line, 7.46 to go. Mike, I have my head down. Tell us what happened. They just went off right tackle, and uh, Rivera picked up about four. It was just a straight dive, simple football. Nice nice tackle. I couldn't get the number on yep. the inside linebacker. I think it was 26. Might have been Brisky 44. It was one or the other. Yeah. Well, if it was the other inside linebacker, that might have been 42, Dylan Hackett. 26 okay. is the outside linebacker, Shane was, Evans. It was either 42 or 44. It was just straight dive play. 
Bunch formation on both sides, so kind of a tight spread, if you can call it that. Toss, toss to the spread. left. Can Rivera get to the edge? No, forced out of bounds. Finished off by number 14 for the Shamrocks, Danny Fassi, but it was number 42 for the Shamrocks who made the play. Dylan Hackett, an inside linebacker. When you're at that tight bunch, the, your, your widest man on the line of scrimmage has to make a good hard down block. And then the second widest man kind of comes around him to cut off the linebacker. They picked up, what, three yards or just two? Two yards. Just two. And they're at the 36, it'll be third and four. Left hash mark. 7.03 to go here in the first. I guess we went out of bounds. Trips three, left. Yep, three wide outs to the short side of the field on the left. Rivera behind the shotgun quarterback, Harvey. He's going to power right. Uh, oh, Bruski looks to blitz. Miranda picked him up, and then Harvey went to throw the ball. It slipped out of his hands, and streaking wide open down the left sideline was Aiden Ramirez. Yeah, he was going wide open, but I thought he was looking at number eight in, coming up uh, inside there on the slot. That's and Cole that's McKenna. Cole McKenna, and I think he was thrown for the first down, but once again, that's a, it's a, a loss of, uh, what, five yards? Yeah, so that's Six a yards. fumble. Yeah. So now the line of scrimmage, yeah, he's back to the uh, 30. Yep. Back to the 28, I think. Says in the, yep. oh, okay. Uh, uh, Laco steps to his right. High punt, calling for the fair catch, bobbling it. And then jumping on it is Connor McHale. And again, Mike, you're right. They don't practice much at night. And that punt went above the height of the lights. Yes, and he just lost it. And he came down, hit him in the right shoulder. He fell on it once again. Yeah. But it's the second minus three. That's the first one was a minus two yard punt yeah. return. This is a minus three yard punt return. And once again, he recovered his own fumbles. So uh, the Shamrocks will begin at their own 35-yard line. They have a 7-0 lead, 6.15 to go first quarter. And this game's moving so fast, we haven't had a chance to play one of our formal commercials. Offensive line for Fian. Left tackle is Mankins. Left guard is Upton. Finucane is the center. Goslin the right guard. Sinelli the right tackle. They are all... They all started in the same places last year. I formation, this is Bruski with a lead block. Nice hit in the backfield, short gain. Turn around, who made that tackle? Ethan Laco from the striker or outside linebacker position. Miranda did a real nice job at a defensive tackle there, bottling it up too. Only yeah. was Bruski picked up two there. No, Bruski was the lead blocker. Oh, then it's, who's the quarter tailback? I'm trying to see who the yeah, tailback Quinn. was. It's still Quinn, right? I believe so. Where is it? David Quinn, yes. Yep. So gain of two, it is second down, eight yards to go. Backs on both sides of the shotgun formation quarterback. Tight end left. Fake to Bruski, cross buck in the backfield. Oh Breaking a tackle across midfield at the Attleboro, well right at the 50 yard line, tackle by Salviati, that's number 12 on the carry for Fian. Brett McCaffrey, the punter and kicker. Well, it's a 13 yard first down. Old-fashioned cross buck, they faked to the right setback, going off left tackle, which was Bruski, and then they just gave it to the uh, left uh, setback, who just delayed a little bit. It really turns into an old-fashioned counter. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, linebackers missed him. Yeah. Literally three yards down the field. Nice open field tackle, save the TD. So Yanchuk and Burns both have not played yet. They're normally two lead running backs. Bruski runs left, loses a yard, Huge hit by number 75. That's Jack Fitzgerald, the senior, 6'2", 180, uh, 184. Mike, wow. going into his senior year, he switched to number 75 because that's the number Chris Leonardo wore. We were talking yes. before the game, a lot of good karma in that jersey. Hey, by the way, where's Chris playing? Marist. Good, good move, Chris. I wanted URI to look at him. Yeah. I wanted URI to look at Edson. So Ed that's Ellis. Of course, he, Ed Ellis, the son, had transferred to Catholic Memorial last year, but yeah. he's an Attleboro kid, and I root for him all. And he's playing at Bryant. Which is a very good thing. Go Sec see him play. Second and ten, so that was well, no I'll game. Write. Screen pass, and because of the pass rush of Jordan, of uh, Ethan Laco, the quarterback, Ayavino had to get rid of that too quickly. Incomplete, third and ten. What a rush by Laco. And again, Laco, his first three years of football, he was a defensive back. Loved to come screaming up to hit people, so Coach Winters put him at linebacker. Well, on that play right there, they had the slot receiver open, but Laco was coming on that A-gap blitz. 
and the quarterback, he really didn't step into the throw. He didn't want to get hit and yep. went over the receiver's head. The receiver was wide open. Number 88 now is in. Sean Judge, the junior, split end to the right. There are two wide outs to the left. Big play, third and 10, 4-11 to go, first quarter. Salviati comes up and then backs off. <laughs> Back to pass, lobbing down the right. They try the post corner pattern. The pass is short because he had to throw off his back foot because of the pass rush of number 14, converted quarter quarterback, now linebacker, Jackson Huntington. Well, whatever the case may be, Attleboro was outside of that very difficult start. They really held the, held the ground here very yeah. well. By the way, Attleboro's defensive coordinator this year, Tommy Burns. Tommy Burns, good ball player, as was his brother. Tommy Tommy could play anywhere, too. Yep. Number 35, McCaffrey with the punt. Good kick. Nice spiral. This will be Laco at his own 17, gets to the wall on the right, turns the corner, strips one tackle. He's across his own 40, down at the 42-yard line. Michael, how's that for some quick acceleration? That was outstanding. It was a 23-yard punt. It was. Uh, what he caught it on the 17, yep. and he's out to the 40. So I guess he's yeah, just a, he's back literally. Uh, he's at the 42. Yeah, 42. So it was a net gain of 25 punt return. Wow. So the Bombardiers take over 3:50 to go in the first quarter. I don't. Well, I don't think the Lego. I don't yep. think the Lego family believes in fair catches. <laughs> <laughs> His big sister, Jordan, has been starting in the backcourt at Bridgewater State College basketball since her freshman year. Trips to the left, one wide receiver right, that's the short side. Fian fakes the blitz. Harvey going deep down the right. Ramirez is out there. Nice D. Overthrown, beautiful defense. Is that number six? <laughs> that would be number five on the cover. Uh, well, Rivera was the receiver. Trying to see who that cornerback is, Mike. That's number six on the coverage, if I have it right. Damon Fournette, the senior. And Rivera, it was going to be a beautifully thrown ball. They're playing three deep coverage, and he let Rivera run into him. Yep. You know, he's got a right. Yep. Rivera bounced off him, and he almost had an interception. Twins right. They give to Ramirez, was out for the pass. Oh, There's nice Rivera, run. bouncing off a tackle, bouncing off another, down the right pass sideline, lowers his shoulder, explodes into the hit with the safety. Biggest play of the game so far for the Bombardiers. First down at the 29-yard line of Fian. Actually, a 31-yard game, he started in his own 40. Rivera is one of these kids, as the head coach was telling us yep. today on the radio, he might not have much weight, but he's got a lot of pop. And he just he took on that first hit, yep. bounced off, it exploded quickly outside, and uh, big first down, and Attleboro's on the march. Right he, hash mark. He's 5'7", 147. He plays like he's 6'2", 220. Well, he's, he, he keeps the shoulders square, and he really accelerates. Same play right up the middle to Rivera. Bruski was there, but who's that on the line first? That's number 70 with the first tackle for Finn. Chris Case Mankins. Two yard gain, second and eight. It's 31 yards on six carries. Of course, that first carry was a minus nine on yeah. the lateral behind him. Attleboro has got its sea legs under him, and they're playing with some confidence right now. So, Mike, that was a 40 yard gain at 32. Okay. Yeah, because they were on their 40 and went to the 29. Right. Twins both ways, left side to the wide side. Running back is Laco, goes from the left side to the right. Screen to the right. Inside. Nice cut by Salviati. Comes all the way back to the left, gets oh, to the tackle. edge. Beautiful open field tackle by number 14, Danny Fassi. It only turned out to be a seven yard gain. Laco went and motion to the right. The right end came back for underneath for a bubble screen. Beautifully thrown. Picked up seven yards. Great defense by who was a number 14 in the yep. Great defense. Seven yard gain. That makes it third and a short one for the Bombardiers. Number one comes in for Attleboro, Aiden Pantages. Wide right is number 15, Malachi Jefferson. No, he's in the slot, excuse me. Was that Briggs who caught that? Who caught no, that? No, that was uh, Salviati. Oh, Salviati. Number four. My fault. Laco is the running back. Harvey's back to pass. Swing pass to Laco. Completed. Gets the first down. Burst Ooh. through a tackle. He's down 
inside just at the 15 yard line. A hair inside the 15. But Laco does not avoid contact. Yeah. Like Salviati, he's dynamite comes in small packages. Seven yard gain, down to the 21, big first down. Actually, Mike, that's the 19. It's the 19? Yes. Then it's a nine yard gain. Big first down. Bombardiers, 108 to go, first quarter, trailing seven nothing, clock is moving. Thien flipping their defense. Again, that pistol formation with a bunch to the right. Two tight ends this time. Yep. Kind of some, a lot of confusion. Back to pass as Harvey gets rid Good of it, move. doesn't reach the line of scrimmage. Oh, wait a minute, you're right, that is, you're right. We'll Paul, see with these new NFHS rules, that might be intentional grounding. Well, it's certainly intentional grounding yeah. <laughs> any game I've ever seen. No! We get lucky? There's no flag on the uh, turf, this techno turf <laughs> here. Yeah, had to be. Intentional grounding. Yes. And Jim Winters is not pleased, but that didn't come within three yards of the line of scrimmage. No, that's the right call. That hurts. So Attleboro, two big mistakes. Their first play from scrimmage, the lateral that led to a nine yard loss and a turnover. And they're gonna, if they mark that from where the spot he threw it. Sure, it's five yards from the spot. So that is a 10 yard. Uh, I guess they're just marking it 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Okay. It was first and 10. <clears throat> so they move all the way back now to the 29 yard line. It is first and, or second and 20. It's a loss of down. Sure. Second and 20. Wide left is Aiden Ramirez. Coach Winters has called him as good as any cornerback he's ever coached, also a receiving threat. Look at that opening for the post. Three wide receivers to the right, that's the short side. They go to Ramirez, and it was overthrown that time, incomplete on the coverage. Number 14 for the Shamrocks, Danny Fassi. That's a hard throw. Yeah. It's a hard catch. And uh, I don't know if they've got a kick who can kick 46 yards. It was just one of those really tough plays. Uh, when they had the heavy formation into the sideline on the right hash mark, I was sure they were going to run a post, yeah. a skinny post, which is a lot easier catch and a lot easier throw. And you still get your best receiver out there making the play. Now they're making some changes late. Hawkwater's going out there. I know he's the long snapper. We'll see if Salviati sets up the tee. Again, he comes from a soccer family. Well, we had, the, once again, yeah. first game of the year last year. Yeah. He had a head game when he field goal. Over 30 yards. He's only back six yards, though. He only has a tee back. This would be a 40-yard field goal attempt. Snap, down. It's going to be short and to the right. Just misses. Yep. Just misses. The field goal attempt is no good, and Fian will take over with 39 seconds left in the quarter, 7-0 lead. Well, we'll be right back after this on Double ACS 15 Sports. Does your back hurt after a long night's sleep? Has your mattress seen better days? Is your current bedroom furniture a mixture of different furniture sets? The Bedding Center, located on Pleasant Street and proud sponsor of this radio station and high school sports, offers a wide array of mattresses along with beds, bedroom furniture, and odd-sized mattresses and box springs. You can reach them online at bedding-center.com or by phone at 508-226-8090. Welcome back, I'm Paul Healy along with big brother Michael Healy, Dave Angel on camera, Peter Bray on graphics, Jim Jones, the engineer in charge, first and 10 Shamrocks, their own 25. I guess the ball must come out to the 25 because the line of scrimmage was 24. Exactly, yeah. Ooh, this 29 is was the line of scrimmage. They run to their right, coming up Salviati and Laco on the tackle, getting in there as well, number 65 for the Bombardiers, Jaden Tatro. And that once again was the uh, sophomore tailback, uh, number 12. McCaffrey. McCaffrey actually is a junior. Yep. Both of their starting tailbacks have to be hurt. Yeah, they Burns is out, Yanchuk is out. And that's a loss. A loss of two. They haven't moved the down marker indicator. And that will end the first quarter of play with the score. The Shamrock 7, the Bombardiers nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action on Double ACS 15 Sports. 
Balls AC, 8 Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Open in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC. 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. Are you looking for meal options for you and your family? Consider Rico Subs and Pizza on Route 1 in North Attleboro. Open since 1971 and a proud sponsor of high school sports in the Attleboro area. Rico's cooks up many flavors of pizzas, subs, and calzones, all in-store and using fresh ingredients. They're open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sundays, 12 noon to 10 p.m. You can also order ahead by calling 508-695-1296. Welcome back to WARA 1320 AM Attleboro and WACS 15 Sports. Paul Healy along with Michael Healy. Second down, 12 yards to go for the Shamrocks. Now heading right to left for the Bombardiers. Jaden Tatro, the 6'3", 183-pound senior playing the nose. The defensive ends are Fitzgerald and Miranda. Jacob Wild will see some time as well. well Eight. Yep. The flip-flop and the tackles. Everybody else just seems to be uh, yep. playing straight up. <laughs> that same formation for Fia, shotgun for, there's the cross buck. Bruski coming from right to left, hammered by a number of Bombardiers. Six of the 11 Bombardier defenders in on the tackle. Salviati and Atetro again with the first hit. Gain of two, third and 10. Boy, I'll tell you, they're just doing a wonderful job right out. Uh, Outside, I mean, they got gashed early on, yep. but they've done a great job on the perimeter. But he gained two yards there, Yes, Brisky? he did. So it'll be third and ten. <laughs> see Spencer <laughs> sure down here on a knee at the far end. Yep. He's not, you know, he's just got to be dying. Also missing for the Bombardiers is Logan Briggs. He broke his leg in the preseason. He had an 82-yard touchdown run against King Phillip, which actually covered about 175 yards. Yes. Serpentine shell, serpentine. And I was hoping he was back early. Back to pass up the right sideline. Great coverage by Rivera. Yes. Incomplete, the intended receiver, Fassi, punting situation. Coaches have a fascination with throwing what I think is a very hard uh, pass for yeah. high school kids to complete. You know, the fade pass is difficult. Yeah. And once again, you know, a three-step slant is not difficult. Mike? Yeah. No, I won't throw the slant pass. That's what they're expecting me to do. Well, you know, once again, in college, you worry about that because yeah. you're in a 4-4 and there's a guy in the passing lane. Yeah. But we've been really pulling our linebackers up tight. There's a little bit of a gap in there. Attleboro might be coming after they this are. punt. Oh, just missing oh, it is Ram Ramirez, but the flag roughing. stays in the official's pocket. Laco catches it at his own 41-yard line, and Ethan Laco, wow, from his own 41 to his own 49, and Mike, there was nothing there. That was a 34-yard punt. Laco got an eight-yard return, and uh, I mean, he just does not believe in a fair catch, yeah. and he heads north. Nice, sharp, precise cuts. So with 10.51 to go in the first half, Bombardier's trailing 7-0. They have the ball. First and 10. I don't think the... Oh, they're marking him back at his own 48. Yes. Okay. So Seven-yard return yep. then. Whatever, whatever the case may be, uh, the fee and bench isn't too happy about no, no punt. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that looked to me like at least running into the punter. <clears throat> the official was right there. I think he may have thought the fee and punter voluntarily collapsed. Timeout by Coach Jim Winter. Again, Jim Winter is the head coach. Came over from Silver Lake. He's also the offensive coordinator. Tommy Burns, the defensive coordinator. We'll be right back after this on ACS 15 Sports. 
Crystal Glass, 110 North Main Street in Attleboro, has supported local high school sports for many years. Crystal Glass has been chosen for glass replacement projects for home and business for over 60 years. From shower doors to auto glass and mirror replacement, Bristol Glass is ready to do the job. They accept most insurance plans and serve several communities around the Attleboro area. They're open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact them at 508-222-5810 and on the web at bristolglass.com. Welcome back. Mike, uh, as we mentioned, more than 90 players came out for the team this year. Before the game, I was talking with three members of the freshman team. Number 66, Scott Bennett, he's a left guard, wanted me to say he plays like a demon. I will say his mother thought he was a demon when he was a young child. We also met number 51, Luke Almeida. He wanted me to say he's the best player on the freshman team, so I'll say Luke is a legend in his own mind. And number 62, Noel Williams. He's the uh, starting guard as well, probably the best player of all of them because he was the most humble. <laughs> well, it's a tight bunch right, <laughs> toss right. And here comes Rivera. Oh, lowers his shoulder, bounces off one hit, but then knocked out of bounds. That first hit delivered by McCaffrey, finishing blow by number 59 for the Shamrocks, Reed Clemente. He really didn't get much of anything, did he? Wow, no. No, it's, you know, they're in the right hash mark. They had a tight bunch to the right, and it's a... Uh, pistol formation where it's a toss to the right and if you don't get that good block immediately on the corner it's got no chance and yep. they didn't get that good block immediately on the corner okay we might have some oh no there it is sorry I thought we had changes on the offensive line but I was looking at the wrong program <laughs> trips to the left that's the wide side Harvey's back to pass they send four down there is Salviati ball is tipped and then intercepted by Connor McHale Comes up the left sideline. What a hit by Rivera! Oh! But another turnover for the Shamrocks. 25 yard interception return by McKenna. He played great last year. And there's a late flag. What a play by Connor McHale to control that tip ball. Well, it was tipped by the corner. And once again, the receiver was upset, but the defensive back, they're playing a three deep zone. Yep. And you've got a right. You can slow down when you see that ball coming in, which is what he did. Yep. And of course the receiver, and that's Anthony Salviati, ran into him, Anthony was upset. Both of them knocked the ball in the air. Yep. Free safety came swooping over for the middle, juggled it, caught it, and then he flew up the left sideline. And what's the penalty call? It was a late flag, some nonsense on the sideline. My goodness, anyway, I had him for a 25 yard return. And that was by the same kid who had a great interception last year, Mikhail. Connor McHale. Yep. And we'll see which way they mark this off. This is going to go against Fian. Wow. So the line of scrimmage would have been the Attleboro 49. But a 15-yard penalty versus Fian on the Attleboro bench. So they'll start this drive. And that's a dead ball foul, Mike. Right. So they'll start this drive at their own 36. It is first and 25. That'll keep Peter Gray on graphics busy. First and 25, Peter. A dead ball foul, wow. Once again, throwing the ball deep. Attleboro's had some success throwing the ball short and in. Every time they've tried to go wide or out, there's been no success. That's their seventh pass they've had. And <clears throat> the first one was actually their eighth, the lateral. Yep. And they've had two critical turnovers as a result. 10.30 to go here in the half. Okay, they are moving the chains. Okay, so it is. it will yeah. be first and 10. Yes. I was going to say, when's the last time I saw a first and 25? So, Peter, it's first and 10 on our graphics. I don't have to tell Peter. He's better at his job than I am at mine. Here we go. He knows his stuff. Daniel Haste. Say it again. Uh, it's just Daniel Haste has really come on here. He's right inside backer. Yep, number 50. Yeah. Actually, weak, light, weak yes. side linebacker, yeah. yes. And Laco plays the strong side. They call that the striker. Coming up the middle on a delayed handoff. Ball is loose. Laco tips it. Scooped up by Salviati. Touchdown, Bob Veneers on a 19-yard return. 7-6, wow. Two breaks 
against the Bombardiers. One big break for them, Mike. Well, I'll tell you, the, the, the right side of the defensive line made it. They, everybody was jumping around. It's very aggressive. To, and the right side of the defensive line forced that play. And then somebody came in and punched the ball free. And then, Sal and then Salviati came in and picked it up on a hop and raced in. And all of a sudden, it's 76 with 10.17 to go in the second quarter. Wow. Hawkwater is the long snapper. Harvey is the holder. Harvey was the long snapper last year. And kicking this PAT is Josu Salguero. Oh, Salviati's not kicking anymore. Uh, Salguero handles the extra points. Salviati the field goals. I see. Salguero can really kick the ball, and he's been with the program for a while. Yeah. 7-7. Well, seven, seven. Bombardiers 10-17 to go. And just when things look bleak, Mike, a big play for the Bombardiers. Boy, I'll tell you, it's, uh, they play with a lot of hustle. They're really quick. And uh, it's a pleasant surprise to me, that's for sure. Yeah. They lost so much up front last year. And, you, and it's a sign of a yep. Mike Stratton did not lead the uh, program empty. Did not lead the cupboard bare. Right. Yeah, Isaiah Miranda, the only returning man on the line of scrimmage. Probably should have snuck a spot in there. Sorry to our sponsors, Claudino's Auto, the Betting Center, Rico's Pizza in North Attleboro, Bristol Glass, W.H. Riley and Son, and Falls AC. They're not an air conditioning company, Michael. They're a restaurant, a club. Oh. <laughs> oh, athletic club. Yes. I get it. <laughs> it still was a hot summer. <laughs> and we're going to see the deep kick for the first time in about eight years. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Coach Winter about the uh, pooch kick against Mansfield last year when Mansfield fumbled the kick. It should have been Attleboro's right. ball, but they gave it back to the Hornets on an inadvertent whistle. That's right. Oh, that was awful. Oh, yeah. And everything fell apart after yep. that. So Salviati will kick off left to right from his own 40-yard line back deep. I remember last year, I mean, Attleboro was four and six, but they played Franklin really tough. Oh, gosh, yeah. Remember, they, they yep. could have they could have tied that game at the very end. Yep. And they, I mean, Mansfield, until that weird thing happened, they were playing them tough. At his own three-yard line, I believe that's Connor McHale. Right. Yes, Boy, it is. He's, he's across the 20, gets to the edge near the 30-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. Initial hit made, I think, number 17, Adrian Alves. <laughs> A senior special teams player. 27 yard return by McHale. Yeah. He's a quick kid. I thought he was a place kicker last year. Maybe I was wrong. Because they, they always has a good place Yeah. So, with, boy, 10.07 to go. With time moving slowly here in this second quarter, it's going to be first and 10 feet in their own 30. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a, I mean, you talk about turning the tables. Yeah. I think Fiend's going to go back inside and try to power inside. Here's the eye formation for Bishop Fiend. Wide out to the left. He's covered man-to-man -man by Hawkwater. Run a counter. Wow. Coming through the gap. I think that's Laco again. Laco and Salviati. Have we called those names enough? But 75 made a uh, play there, too. And that's number 75, the first-year senior starter, Jack Fitzgerald, right tackle on offense, the field side defensive end on defense. Was that number 12 who ran that ball? Boy, darn that short-term memory loss. No, I forget now. I, I it's only a two-yard loss because they were driving them back so yeah. far. And it's very hard to see the numbers. And, of course, at my age, the vision ain't what it used to be. Yeah. Actually, Mike, number 26 is in there now, Shane Evans. Maybe it was Shane. Okay. I'll know tonight when I rewatch this broadcast. Yeah. Second and 12 from their own 28 Fullback. for the Shamrocks. Yeah. There's Bruski. Miranda's doing Huge. a great job at right defensive tackle. And also in there, number 56, Miranda. Oh, yeah. Was just doing a great job. Wow. Bruski had nothing. Boy, and again, the first three plays from scrimmage, the Shamrocks blew the Bombardiers off the ball. Uh, Coach Winter, the D.C. defensive coordinator, Tommy Burns, obviously they made some yeah. adjustments. Well, <clears throat> one of the adjustments is inside they started hitting back. And Miranda okay. did a great job right there. I mean, this offensive line, they averaged 6'1", 230 last year for, uh, for Fian, and they're all a year older, the same guys. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, yep. 
So uh, Battleboro's defensive line, three new guys out of the four defensive linemen against five returning starters, and they've played well since that first possession. Shotgun formation, third and 12 for I Iovino. Quarterback draw. Oh, nice play and a draw. Haste comes up, forces him to the outside, pushes him out of bounds. Didn't make it. I think that's short of first down yardage. Haste with the tackle, the carry by number seven, Iovino. Yep. And that's just, yards. yep. Well, it was, it was second and 12, so I think we'll give him six on that. It's fourth and six, punting situation. It was third and 12. Okay. Yeah, third and 12. So, one, two, three. This is the fourth fee and punt coming up. McCaffrey, nice punt. This time Salviati says, I don't need no stinking fair catch, but he is taken down almost immediately by three fee and players. Get up there, son. That's number 88, Sean Judge, and number four, Andrew Nelson. 28 yard punt. I mean, it's a gutsy play. I'd like to see a fair catch there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> both, both these kids, they're aggressive kids. Yep. They love to play. Ball's just inside the 38 yard line, right hash, 8.05 to go here in the second. Attleboro has definitely turned the tide. I think that was only their third punt. Hold on. You are correct. Thank you. All right. You get, <laughs> look at that. Four receivers to the right. Wow. Tight end left. No, no, no running back. And yes. that's the play they run to Rivera. Gets a nice block out front by number 11, McKenna. The Brody variety. First down for Rivera. And I think he's into Shamrock territory. Oh, he certainly is. What a block by McKenna. I'll tell you, that was a gorgeous play. You put three athletes out there blocking for another athlete. Yeah. Picked up 12 yards, big first down. And they're right at midfield. First and 10. Bombardiers again. The left tackle is Gray, the sophomore. Haste, the junior, is the left guard. Miranda is the center. Tatro, the right guard. Fitzgerald, the right tackle. Those two are seniors. Rivera, again, Mike, takes his 143 pounds, lowers his head, and moves the pile. Got two yards. I wonder what his weight is on the leg press. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you know, it, it's, we've seen it, you know, we're back from a generation where there were a lot of very good 150 pound backs. Yeah. But so many of them are playing soccer now. Yeah, exactly right. That's a great point, Mike. Oh, they can run all day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's uh, just the way, the way things have happened. I mean, yeah. you, you do a lot of soccer games down here. Yeah. You see a lot of really good athletes Ooh. running around out there. And then at, you see Alex Vecchioli, who was the underclassman of the year in the Hockamock League yeah. last year, Attleboro's leading scorer. He's built like an outside <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> Second and long eight. Bombardiers, bunch formations on each end of the formation. Straight Back drop. to pass is Harvey. He's going to go deep on a post. Uh -oh. Miscommunication. Another interception. Interception made by number 17, Chad McHale. And if you see the movie Cool Hand Luke, there's a line yeah. where the sheriff says, what we have here is failure to communicate. Interception. Well, at least it was a good punt. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another miscommunication. It's Who's that pass intended for, Paul? Was that Salviati out there, I think? It might think have been so. Rivera. It was ever in the right slot. It was Salviati then. Yes. But it had no chance. So Fian will take over. Where are they? Their own 19? Their own 19 yard line. You're right, Mike. That was like a, uh, oh, about a 30 yard punt. You know, I'd like to see uh, Harvey run the ball on RPO. Yeah. He's a very deceptive athlete, and people forget he's a very good defensive back besides being a quarterback. He's yeah. a tough kid. Nice sweep. They run a cross back, a sweep with McCaffrey. Breaks a tackle in the backfield, turns a five yard loss into about a four yard gain. Maybe five. Normally we like to credit the offensive lineman, Mike, but McCaffrey did that on his own. McCaffrey faked Brody McKenna out of his job. <laughs> no, Brody thought he was going wide. He was playing to that foot cut up inside him. And you're right, he had him for a minus five and he picks up a plus six. Yeah, he's at the. 25 now. So it's third 
long four, short five. I mean, second in a long four or short five. Here's that same formation. Tight end to the left. Again, the cross buck to McCaffrey. Big hole. Breaks through the McKenna tackle attempt. Laco finally brings him down. First down, Shamrocks right in front of their student section. A 13 yard gain. And now in this game of adjustments, it's the Shamrocks who have made the adjustments. Well, once again, what we've seen them, the successes they've had are basically either the inside counter or the inside dive. Yeah. They haven't had any success really throwing the ball. They, you know, get eight yards in five attempts and uh, they haven't had a success trying to get outside. Yeah. That was a real nice cutback to set this up, but inside they've gashed us a couple times. Two tight end formation. Nope, I'm lied. One tight end to the left. They run the exact same play to the right, coming up this time and making the hit. We, I think Ethan Laco enjoys this game, Michael. Yes. You know, it's funny. They just ran the same play, but once again, the left defensive end bugged it. Yeah. And he had to bounce outside. Laco. You know, I used to play that position. Yeah. You're reading the back, and once he saw him come outside, he was in his face in no time flat. Yeah, also in there was number eight, Cole McKenna. Second and nine. So Logan Briggs is out for how long? Is he out for the uh, year? He's out for a while. What a shame. He just got the cast off, and he was telling me leg feels weak. He hopes to be back before the season's over. Second and nine from their own 39 yard line. 4.26 to go in the half. Down the right sideline, nice coverage by number one for the Bombardiers, Aiden Pantages. And remember Mike, last year in that New Bedford game, New Bedford yes. tried an onside kick. Senior Nick Pantages right. recovered the onside kick. On the very next play, you said Aiden Pantages is gonna be a good player next year, and he caught a 47-yard touchdown right pass. The bat. And then you said, he's gonna be a good player this year. No, they got plenty of skilled kids that just can't get them all on the field. Yeah. Which is a nice thing to see, and yeah. none of them are big. They just, they're football players. Yep. Twins left. Press coverage on the left out there with Pantages. That's some confidence. Yeah. Two safeties. Split backfield. Laco drops into coverage. Hits the receiver going out for the pattern. So the quarterback, Iavino, looks the other way. Scrambles, dies for the first. Gets Gutsy up. play. He might be a little bit short. Pantages in on the tackle. And someone else over there. I think he got about seven. No, he got eight yards. Wow. Left end uh, gave up contain there. Yeah. Paced in there as well on the tackle. Oh, they said his knee hit, Mike. Yeah, so, so I, thought it was, I thought his knee did hit. By he's the down way. at the 46. So now it's fourth and two. And a 10 10 game with 3.46 to go. They're going to be punting for the fourth time. So that's a what? Six yard? No. Seven, 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 seven yard game. Yeah. And, wow. Fourth and a long two. You can call it a short three if you like. This is the fourth punt for McCaffrey. It's a classic Iowa punt formation. Yep. Nice one. Nice Salviati is back at his own 17. Oh, he got right. right away. He is drilled by number six, Damon Frenette. And three more. 36 yard punt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mike. Yes, sir. Do they know the rule about the fair catch? No, I don't. <laughs> and once again, it's a very risky play because if you even bobble it, you're going to get. Yeah. I mean, Two of these tackles have been instantaneous. Yeah. So the Bombardiers with 3.18 to go in the first half. They're placing the ball at their own. We call it the 16 or 17. I'd say 17. All right. First and 10. Score is tied 7-7. I got to remember to give the score more often for our radio audience. <laughs> Late in the first half. And again, last year these two teams played. The game was not competitive. No. 34 0 Fiend, and it wasn't that close. Rivera runs right through another tackle, bounces off Mankins, and then there are 18 different Shamrocks on the tackle. How many sneak them on the field? He gained a yard. Bruski, uh, after Mankins made the hit, drove him into Bruski, then all the teammates jo uh, jumped on. Well, Yankus last year, Yanchik rather. Yeah. I mean, he was about 205 pounds. Yeah. And he was. Banging. I mean, he was a big, strong kid, and, and they really miss him. 
Again, Yangchik injured in the second game against Attleboro last year. A non-contact knee injury missed the season. And uh, against North, had 111 yards rushing on 11 carries in their first game, but not ready to go today, unfortunately. On either side it. of the ball. Yeah, right. Harvey oh. gives it to Rivera on a draw. Again, bursts through a tackle. Taken down by number 26 for Fee and Shane Evans, but he's all the way out to the 25-yard line. That's a seven-yard game. Well, this is going to be third. <coughs> about two and a half. Rivera's doing a good job. I've got him for 39 yards on nine carries. And that's with the seven-yard loss to nine start the, nine-yard loss. loss to start the game. It's really eight carries for 48 yards. Trips to the left. That's the wide side. Rivera. Same formation they just ran. Yep, Rivera is the farthest outside. Haven't gotten him the ball yet. He is dangerous. Out of the pistol, ran it again. They again, play. they give it to Rivera. You got it. Positive yardage. In on the tackles, number 26, Evans, and number 42, Hackett. First down. Jeez, he got five yards, four yards there. Nice job. Clock stops temporarily with 1.44 to go. Leko checks in. Ball's at the 29-yard line. Salviati really, I mean, Rivera really took a shot there. Wow. Yeah, and you know, aren't too many team times, you, he's the kind of kid who doesn't want to show pain. Yeah. Like Leko. Yeah. And Five. Uh, he's sore right now. 5'7", 147, clock moving with 120 to go in the first half. Bombardier's play action pass. Running to his right is Harvey. Pantages is wide open in the middle of the field, but uh, Harvey was running for his life he there. certainly was. Boy, Mankin showing some speed, forcing him out of bounds. Also coming up, number 17. Why is there no 72 in the program? For who? For Shamrocks. Who's number 72? That's a good point. There is no 72. Well, their defensive, starting defensive ends were Chase Mankins and... Maybe Brendan Koss, number 39, has switched to number 72. Yeah, when well he's 6'1", 235, he looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. So what we got a gain on that uh, by Harvey of what, four yards? Uh, give him three. Oh, uh, four. Yep, he got four. Second and six. 110 to go. The clock stopped. Running up the middle, spinning. I think that's Laco on the carry. Line of scrimmage was the 33. <laughs> It was Laco. Yeah, there wasn't Rivera. That was Laco, yeah. Ethan's a senior, right? Well, ball's on the right hash mark. Third down and the very short two, actually. Ball they've been running successfully inside. Clock is running. Adelbert just trying to get yeah. out of the half. Even though they don't get the ball to start the second wow. half, they're very happy to be 7-7 seven to seven yep. after that awful beginning. Third and a long two. They give to Leko up the middle. Nice collision. Great hit by number 26. That is Shane Evans, and we think that was uh, 72. And Leko got the Brendan first Goss. down anyway. Wow. He spun, and he got a four-yard, three-yard gain for the first down. Four-yard wow. gain for the first down. Wow, so Laco running hard. They're at their own 41. 12, 11 seconds, 10 seconds. They're just going to let this half run out. Think about this. Attleboro's given, had three turnovers in the half, yep. and they're tied 7-7, seven to seven, and the first turnover was basically for a touchdown. Tied 7-7 seven to seven at the half with three turnovers against a team that whacked them 34 nothing last it's year. true. Defense call the timeout, or is Attleboro, did they call Attleboro so they can uh, give it a heave down here? With, oh, there we go. There's the half. I'm not sure. No one's moving. Okay. There they go. Okay, that's the half. All right, a little bit of confusion there. We're going to take a break, give our sponsors some love, and then come back. Whoops. And then come back with some uh, first half stats after this. After 24 minutes, Attleboro 7, Bishop V and Shamrock 7 on AACS 15 Sports and 1320 WARA Radio. Crystal Glass, 110 North Main Street in Attleboro, has supported local high school sports for many years. Bristol Glass has been chosen for glass replacement projects for home and business for over 60 years. From shower doors to auto glass and mirror replacement, Bristol Glass is ready to do the job. They accept most insurance plans and serve several communities around the Attleboro area. 
They're open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact them at 508-222-5810 and on the web at bristolglass.com. Falls AC, 8-Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Opened in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. On Thursday, September 22nd, youth in 5th through 12th grades are welcome to stop by the Attleboro Public Library for Spooky Bingo. Participants are welcome to wear library-appropriate costumes, dress in black, orange, or a Halloween spooky fall-themed shirt to celebrate. The bingo prizes will be candy to take home and enjoy. Spooky bingo will take place in the Balfour Room from 6 to 7 p.m. Space is limited, so registration is required to save yourself a seat. To register, you can call Megan Witherall at 508-222-7820. If you're enjoying this broadcast, you may enjoy my radio show weekdays 9 a.m. till noon on 1320 WARA all over the world at WARARadio.com. It's Pontificating with Paul and the Proletariat, a radio show and a parody of same at times. When the show is good, it's very, very good. When it's bad, it's utter drivel, but at least it's never average. 9 till noon, weekdays on 1320 WARA. W.H. Riley is here when it comes to heating your home or business this winter. W.H. Riley and Son always welcomes new customers. They're a family-run business serving the Attleboro area since 1873. They offer heating oil and propane with 24-hour emergency service. For more information, you can contact them at 508-699-4651 or their website, whriley.com. W.H. Riley and Son, 35 Chestnut Street, North Attleboro, a company many greater Attleboro residents have called on since 1873. Claudino's Auto Repair, located at 310 South Main Street in Attleboro, is celebrating 26 years in the auto and truck repair business. Over the years, John Claudino and his team of mechanics have worked to build a long-lasting rapport with their customers. From oil changes to diagnostics, transmissions, and routine maintenance on foreign and domestic cars and trucks, Claudino's will keep your vehicle running. Claudino's Auto Repair, 508-226-8545 or at claudinosautorepair.com. Welcome back to AACS 15 Sports, 1320 WARA Radio in Attleboro, which reminds me, I've got to get this in here. You're listening to WARA, 1320 AM, Attleboro. Mike, I'm not sure if it's late in the second quarter or at halftime. North Attleboro, 14, Mansfield, 7. Great battle. (laughs) Yeah. No surprise. (laughs) Two of the best high school programs in the last 30 years yep. statewide. The very top. I, I think they're both the top five record-wise. Uh, yeah. And uh, so it's no surprise. Yeah. I mean, Attleboro has been Attleboro, and ever since Mike Redding took over, from Mike Redding's second or third year yeah. at Mansfield, they're just great football team. I think he was, t- maybe it's 28, but I think he was 26 years old when he took over because I was doing games for New England High School Football yes. Weekly back then. Oh, thank you very much. King Philip, 28. Needham from the Bay State League, nothing. Uh, King Philip, every year. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and by the way, Rudy Gately, their tailback is hurt. But it's their front, their offensive and defensive lines. Nobody out hits King Philip. Yeah. I don't care who they play. They exactly. Play, <laughs> they, they played Catholic Moore last year. They get beat. Yeah. Oh. And but they, I mean, they played them tough to score. I think it ended up like forty-two to eighteen. Well, they were the only team all season to have a lead on yes. Catholic Memorial in the second quarter. That's right. And then late in the second quarter, of course, that you know, I mean, CM is fabulously athletic. Yeah. 
but with they, Ed Ellis of Attleboro at left guard. That's right, <laughs> and they and they had the the big tight end uh, who's going to BC next year. Is, I mean, they were loaded. Yeah. And uh, so it ended up 42-18. But anybody saw that game? Yep. That was not a 42-18 football game. Exactly right. Uh, this game started off. The Bombardiers received the opening kickoff after King Philip declined after winning the toss. They tried a fancy lateral to you Aiden. Said, you said King Philip, I think. Excuse me. Bishop sorry, Fian. Bishop Fian. Same colors. Yes. <laughs> uh, Attleboro tried a fancy lateral to Aiden Rivera on first down. Uh, that led to a nine-yard loss and a fumble. It took Fian three plays to move 20 yards into the end zone. Uh, one carry was by number 34. Don't tell me. Uh, David Quinn and then Bruski. Two outstanding runs of seven yards and 10 yards. Thank you very much uh, for the touchdown to make it 7 nothing. Uh, then there was an exchange of punts between both teams. Da, 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 da. Then there was an interception exactly. in the punt. <laughs> exactly. Attleboro missed a 40-yard field goal. Another interception for KP. And then KP had B first, B excuse Bishop, me, Bishop, Bishop Fian. First, you know, they both have great girls soccer programs, too. That's, it's got to be the problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, Bishop Fian, from their own 36-yard line on first and 10, they fumbled the ball, ripped away by Ethan Laco, scooped up by Salviati for a 19-yard touchdown return. PAT was good, 7-7. Attleboro forced another Fian punt. Fian forced another Attleboro interception. Attleboro forced another Fian punt. And then the Bombardiers ran out the clock in the first half. And we never figured out who was the running back <laughs> when they, he got hit yep. behind the line of scrimmage. Yep. And then the ball was ripped out and it bounced back seven yards. Yeah. So he had, on that 19-yard return, there was a minus five by one of the running backs. Yep. And, of course, I missed it because yep. I got excited. My apologies. I, I put David Quinn, number 34, on my notes only because that's the number I yes. wore when I played. Okay. But I'm not sure if it was Quinn. We have another score. Foxborough, who defeated Attleboro in yes. a scrimmage earlier this year in a scoreless tie with the Whitman Hanson Panthers. Well, it's Attleboro. I mean, uh, Foxborough in their first game played uh, Todd Kiley's Holliston team, which has had a, a lot of success. Uh, they and, a and Ashland have really dominated the, uh, uh, the Tri Valley League recently. And uh, I, think how, I think Holliston this year is a package. Uh, Kiley's yeah. kid is the quarterback. And oh, once wow. again, they're the kind of team that always bothers Foxborough because Foxborough has trouble on the perimeter. <laughs> Remember last year, Milford? Yeah. Milford ran up 50 points on the first game. Yeah. And they had a really good team. They ended up going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> they ended up going to the oh, Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, called their game, Division 5. <laughs> yep. So. They lost it, but they ended up going to the Super Bowl. We have to take another quick break to thank our sponsors. When we come back, we'll have first half stats. We're at halftime, 7-7 seven, seven between the Bombardiers and the Shamrocks. Are you looking for meal options for you and your family? I'm looking for a clue. Are you looking for meal options for you and your family? Consider Rico Subs and Pizza on Route 1 in North Attleboro. Open since 1971 and a proud sponsor of high school sports in the Attleboro area. Rico's cooks up many flavors of pizzas, subs, and calzones, all in store and using fresh ingredients. They're open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sundays, 12 noon to 10 p.m. You can also order ahead by calling 508-695-1296. On Wednesday, September 21st from 7 to 8 p.m., Amy Maracle will lead an art therapy and mindfulness event at an unlikely story. Amy will introduce the idea of slow drawing and mindfulness and do a short reading followed by a slow drawing with attendees and a signing. Amy blogs and teaches classes online at mindfulartstudio.com. She is the author of the book, Draw Yourself Calm. For more info or to register, you can visit an Unlikely Stories website at unlikelystory.com. 
Balls AC, 8 Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Open in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC, 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. You're listening to WARA, 1320 AM, Attleboro. Welcome back to WACS 15 Sports. I'm Paul Healy along with Michael Healy, Dave Angel on camera, Peter Bray on graphics, Jim Jones, the engineer in charge. Mike, that's Mike Baldwin, the stat taker for the Bombardiers this year who was giving us the out-of-town scores. Oh, thank you very much, Mike Baldwin. Well, a little bit of stats in the first half. We had eight... Adrian Rivera had 10 carries for 43 yards. It was really nine carries for 52. Yep. But we had to give him credit or discredit yeah. for that nine-yard fumble, which basically was a ball thrown behind him in the first play of the game. Everybody in Attleboro would like to forget. But it led to a touchdown. And then uh, Ethan Laco a, had... Uh, a shamrock touchdown. A shamrock touchdown yep. the other way. Yep. And he had two carries for seven yards and a first down. Matt Harvey had one carry for four yards. Matt threw the ball nine times. Uh, five were completed, but unfortunately, two were completed. It's the wrong team. <laughs> so he was three for nine for 28 yards. You don't get many easy passes. You know, I've heard me say this many times. Yep. The old-fashioned offenses, mm. whether it's the wing tee, whether it's the wishbone, whether it's the eye formation, yep. where you throw off the attacking ball fake. Yes play action pass is what it's known. Yeah. It's a lot easier to throw because the linebackers in high school football yeah. are rarely involved in the defense. And when uh, you're passing to, defense. Pass defense. Yeah. And when you're trying to throw deep against a 4-4-3 with three veteran secondary guys and a great free safety, yeah. and there's no deception, you just take them back and throw it, yeah. and that safety's reading your eyes, hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Sa yeah, if the safety reads his eyes and the cornerbacks stay as deep as the deepest yes. man, it's trouble. It is. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, this is not a quiz. It's just an observation. Yeah. Modern football is taking away some of the things that we found when I used to coach yeah. that were most effective. Well, you I remember when we had, we generally averaged, when we ran the wing tee, we threw the ball about a third of the time. Yep. And of that, a third of the time, we threw about 15 times a game. Only five are drop back passes. And our play action passes, our average completion was 15 yards. Yeah, but again, uh, your quarterback was Mike Powell. That was one year. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the seven years I worked with Jan and I had the stats. And you, you know, won 72% of your games. Yeah, we, we did quite well. <laughs> we were the smallest enrollment school in the league. Yeah. And it was like the same way Westwood. They had, I can't remember what Eric's last name was. He was a great coach at Wol Wolfenden or something. Yeah. But I remember three years in a row. They beat terrific Foxborough teams in the opening game Wow! because they had athletic kids who could run all over the place. They yep. had a nice play-action pass attack. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years ago when the Shoba beat a great Reading team in the Super Bowl. Yeah, we called that for the end of yep. Yep. And it was three for five passing for 160 yards and two bomb touchdowns to on a, bootlegs. To a kid named Troy Barksdale. <laughs> His grandparents were listening out in Minnesota. <laughs> My daughter, her best friend now is uh, Louisa. Uh -huh. She grew up in Minnesota, a neighbor of the Bark Barksdales. Well, you remember that? Thing? That might have been three for seven, eight. Three completions yeah. over 50 yards of completion yeah. because they were running power wing T and then bingo, yeah. they'd run that play action pass. And it was one man, one man to beat. I got to get, get a couple more spots in, and you can okay. talk about the wing T all night. What were Fian's stats? Fian's stats were not good either. <laughs> uh, their quarterback was uh, two for six for eight yards. Running the ball, there were 18 carries for 58 yards, three first downs, one touchdown. Uh, Quinn had really, we had to give him that late yep. fumble on that play. He had no yards on three carries. Bruski had 17 in his first carries, first three carries, nothing on his last, uh, two yards on his last uh, three. So he had 19 yards for five carries. Yep. And McCaffrey did a nice job. He had 33 yards on six carries. 
with a couple of first downs. Brewski had a great 10-yard touchdown run. Yeah, and brewski has been outstanding at linebacker as well, no surprise. Oh, yeah. You could hear the roar of the crowd as Attleboro came back on the field. Uh, for those who think the modern spread offenses are great and are sick of hearing Mike talk about the wing T, we have this clip. I don't like that kind of talk. Now just stop it, it upsets me. <laughs> We're gonna take one more break. We'll be back for second half action on Double ACS 15 Sports. Claudino's Auto Repair, located at 310 South Main Street in Attleboro, is celebrating 26 years in the auto and truck repair business. Over the years, John Claudino and his team of mechanics have worked to build a long-lasting rapport with their customers. From oil changes to diagnostics, transmissions, and routine maintenance on foreign and domestic cars and trucks, Claudino's will keep your vehicle running. Claudino's Auto Repair, 508-226-8545 or at claudinosautorepair.com. Also remember the betting center on Pleasant Street, Rico's Pizza, North Attleboro, Bristol Glass on North Main Street, W.H. Riley and Son in North Attleboro for your heating and cooling needs. And Falls A.C., our newest sponsor to join the club. Mike, uh, you were a long-time coach. We just had halftime. Halftime adjustments, overrated or real? Oh, I've always felt uh, that uh, the, the really good coaches prove themselves at halftime. I, I don't think there's anything overrated at all. Yep. And uh, I think Attleboro, my only suggestion for them yep. is give your quarterback easier throws to make. Mm -hmm. And for Fian, uh, your quarterback, I mean, you had a great quarterback last year. Yeah. He's a first-year senior starter. Yeah. He just played against a great team. Yeah. You've seen, you've got to go at, you've got to go at Attleboro, yep. right at him. And uh, that's the only suggestion yeah. as far as it goes. Whoever makes the least mistakes in the second half is going to win this game. And again, the Bombardiers had three turnovers in the first half. He and one. One turnover. But it was a humdinger. Yeah. yeah, Attleboro scored on it. Six men in the front line for Fian as Attleboro is kicking off right to left. Salviati, just a three-step approach. This is going to land at the 16. Fielded on one hop at his own 13. Breaks a tackle up the sidelines is Connor McHale, I believe, across the 30-yard line, down to the 33. Is that McHale again? Yeah, that's number three, Connor McHale. Salviati, the kicker, was in on the tackle, along, I believe, with Aiden Pantages. Well, once again, he, he, he's a good returner. Yeah. So they'll start first and 10, their own 33, I believe. Where are you putting this? 32. Okay, so, that, and he caught that on the 13, a 19 yard return? Yep. So third quarter tied at 7, 11.51 to go. Fian will start 68 yards from the Attleboro end zone. And tight end is to the left side, that's the short side, along with a wing who comes in motion right. And they toss to the short side with McCaffrey. Lowers his shoulder, coming up to make that hit. Number five, Aiden Ramirez. He's known for his speed, but he showed his courage there. Boy, that was just a nice play. They, they had a misdirection. They pulled the right guard to the right to try to pull the linebacks and toss the ball to the left, and yep. he only got a yard. Also in that play was, uh, I believe, number 11, the linebacker, Brody McKenna, the Mike linebacker, middle linebacker. On the defensive line is Fitzgerald, senior going both ways. Miranda, he's the center on offense. No, oh, that's number 71, Cameron Gray in there playing some defense. Miranda on the defensive end. Four point stance. Yep. They try to run left again. Hit in the backfield. Coming from the backside, number 11, Brody McKenna, the 5'10", 168-pound junior. Boy, that was just, he ran a little twist with the left defensive tackle, flew right over the center position in, uh, my, what, minus three? No, it was, sec it was uh, second and nine. Okay, so. Oh, so now it's second. Oh, wow, it's uh, minus two. Minus two. Second and 11. Well, that was McCaffrey again, right? Yep. Jeez, I mean, this is an experienced offensive what line. Doing and here? Attleboro's doing a marvelous job against them up front with his aggressively yep. blitzing four, you know, four-man front defense. Two wideouts to the right, one to the left, split backs around Iavino, the and quarterback. A quick post thrown late. 
incomplete pass. Who was that pressure applied by? Well, Laco came off the left corner, but it came, pressure came from the right. Number 14, Jackson Huntington, the converted quarterback. Fourth and 11, another punting situation. Is this the fifth? Yes. Is that Huntington? Is Number 14, 6'2", 203 pound junior. He's been a quarterback his whole life. Harvey wasn't going to beat out Matt Harvey at the quarterback, and Jim Winter said, we have got to use this kid somewhere. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, shorter kick Short this time. punt. Won't be a return. Blocks. Oh, it is on the bounce at the 47. Picks it up at his own 44. Laco goes across midfield, across the 45. He's to the 41-yard line of the Shamrocks. 15-yard return by Ethan, Ethan Laco. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Ethan. <laughs> so he ended up in what, the plus 41? Yep. Wow. The kick was <laughs> off to the right. It got a very favorable bounce, but the who's ever running down as the right gunner did not see it go outside him. And Laco being very opportunistic, even though it was a, a, a hop, he yep. caught it in full stride and picked up 15 yards and Adelboro's in, in positive territory. Salviati and a quarterback in the Wildcat runs right, cuts back left, yes. hit high by who turn around. That's number 55 with the initial hit. Tristan Upton, teammates took him down. That's going to be a loss. But back to that Laco punt return. Uh, that's a loss of at least two. Yes. Uh, but Mike, um, uh, was that Laco or Salviati four? Oh, Salviati. Yeah, Salviati yeah. four. But how many times? Have we complained about the uh, return man not catching the punt? No, you're right. With Laco and Salviati, I don't think that's going to be an issue this year. No, it truly <laughs> isn't, and they're only going back 30 yards, and they want to get it in the air. But yeah. That, you know, they're very opportunistic kids. Nice fake. And there's Salviati again. Might have been a face, a face mask. mask. It yes. was a face mask. Final tackle is made by Shane Evans, who's had a ton of them. This 40, is going to be a break for the Bobadiers. That was 42 who was, uh, made the face mask pull, I think. Yeah. And boy, that hurt them because he, I mean, what are you reaching up for? Yeah. Why aren't you driving low and hard? You're a very good football player. You had them, it would have been third and 10 for a one yard gain. Yep. And that face mask is going to add 15 to it. And boy, is that a lucky break for uh, Blue Bombardiers. Wow. Second 15 yard penalty against the Shamrocks. One was a dead ball penalty after an interception return. So with 9.15 to go in the third quarter, tied at seven, first and 10 Bombardiers, and they are at the 37 yard line of Fian. You mean the 27 yard line? 27, thank you. A slant to the middle. Yes. Mike was calling for the slant. It goes to Salviati. First down, another tackle from behind by Shane Evans. They're inside the 10. 17 yard gain, and when you're playing against the zone, that slant, you can't run into the inside linebacker. Yep. He made three steps, he stopped dead. The ball was a strike by Harvey. He caught it, headed diagonally right up the field for 17 yard gain, huge first down, big wow. play. Trips to the left, that's the wide side. Nobody wide to the right. Gotta run ice inside. Rivera is back in, puts his head down. Initial contact with number 59. Uh -oh. And 59's not on our program. Oh, there it is, Reed Clemente, the defensive tackle. But that's gonna be a gain of two. And there's a penalty thrown in by the linesman. That's never a good sign for the offense. Could be a hold. So Rivera gets two yards on the gain. They're putting it at the all right, let's see what the white hat Eight. has for a signal. I'm just glad Rivera's face back in the game. Face mask again. Wow. Another face mask. Do you believe that? So he picked up one I'm yard amazed. again. I mean, those are two one-yard games yep. where there were two face masks. So now it's a first and goal at the four-yard line. 7 7. 8.24 to go, third quarter, clock moving. Hutchinson lines up. That's Huntington, excuse me, is a tight end on the left. Mike, tight splits on the line of scrimmage. No splits. Yeah. I, for, I mean, <laughs> under, under the center. That's a wing T formation. Yes, inside counter, and they got Rivera. It all. They got all screwed yeah. up, but Rivera drags tacklers. 
to the edge of the goal line. He's in. He's in the end zone, and the Bombardiers have the lead over Bishop Fian for the first time in four years. Wow. 147 pounds, and you are driving your legs through the Shamrock defense. They were running the fullback belly and faking the counter, and it really looked like a, well, we can't be obscene, yeah. but it was a cluster. Bleep. <laughs> and it turned out the fullback got the first carry. I thought they were trying to run the counter. Yeah. And it turns out Rivera just keeps on driving those legs. He runs low. Yeah. And he gets in behind the offensive lineman, and they, it's just good football. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Was that a bad uh, hold or anyway? Mike, I was writing to my notes. I was hoping you saw. Well, it, the, the kick went. I, it, it didn't go anywhere. Well, the ball ended up in the hands of number 88. You saw it better than we did, folks. It might have been a block by Sean Judge. So the PAT is no good, and that's big. But the Bombardiers have a 13-7 lead with 7.56 to go in the third quarter. I, frankly, am amazed. We'll be right back. Claudino's Auto Repair, located at 310 South Main Street in Attleboro, is celebrating 26 years in the auto and truck repair business. Over the years, John Claudino and his team of mechanics have worked to build a long-lasting rapport with their customers. From oil changes to diagnostics, transmissions, and routine maintenance on foreign and domestic cars and trucks, Claudino's will keep your vehicle running. Claudino's Auto Repair, 508-226-8545 or at claudinosautorepair.com. Welcome back to ACS 15 Sports and 1320 WARA Radio. Attleboro will kick off right to left. And uh, Mike, if I was the Bombardiers, I would kick away from number three, Connor McHale. He's on the left back there. He's done enough damage against you. <laughs> yes, you're right. You know, he's, uh, last year he had a field day against us. Yes. Of course, the whole team had a field day against us last year. Careful with the us. This is an Attleboro station and both schools are at Attleboro. You got it. You're right about that. <laughs> you're right about that. That's a very good point. Uh, Salvi lost, lost my head. Salviati will kick <laughs> off right to left. He wants it to be deeper this time. He was upset with his kick last time. Yeah. Got under it a little bit. Big divot on the uh, sandwich <laughs> or, or nine iron. Has the white I, half given him a signal yet? You know, I'm just looking over at the uh, Fiat yeah. sideline, and you can see Yanchuk and Burns standing together. Burns is on crutches. Wow. And they do kick it to Connor McHale Coming again. in the middle. Glutton for punishment. <coughs> he finds a gap again. Who made that hit? Get up. That's number 15, 15 on the tackle, Malachi, Malachi Jefferson. It's a he made some special team tackles last year. When did he catch that in the 13? Yep. Okay, 20. And he got it out to the 32? Yep. So it's a 20 yard return. Jeez. I mean, he's a very good returner. Real so, nice tackle. So Fian takes over their own 32, first and 10. They are trailing 13 7, and it's been at least three seasons since Attleboro's had a lead on this club. Well, when you're missing your two best running backs yep. and you're a running team, it's awfully hard. There's that <laughs> cross buck. There's a hole. McCaffrey had a hole for a minute, but caught. Get up. That's number 11, Brody McKenna, 168-pound middle se linebacker. 73 had a piece of him, too. Who's 73? That's Jacob Wild, a 5'10", 318-pounder. He comes off the bench to relieve Miranda. Was that McCaffrey who ran that? I uh, yes, number 12 again, yep. Yeah. So Jacob Wild, good for him. Oh, Miranda's in there with Wild. Well, they're very athletic at defensive end, yep. and it's showing with the speed they've been able to contain the uh, wide stuff uh, of Fian very, very successfully. Haste <coughs> and McKenna, the inside linebackers right now. There's Bruski, lowers his shoulder, runs over a couple of bombardiers, but they hit him low, so it's a short gain. Yep, he only got three yards there, and it was once again, he, yep. Yep. a nice call on the defensive side by Bernsey. Uh, they ran a corner blitz corner linebacker blitz right into that forced uh brisky inside it's third and a short three at their own 39 salviati was in in that tackle also uh miranda was in there as well but uh boy brusky dante brusky son of you know who 
Um, rather enjoys contact. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure he's a great kid. Yep. His father's a great guy. Is that two tight ends? Two tight See, ends. Is. This is power eye. There it is. That's an old fashioned. And McCaffrey runs right. Number 75 made the first play for the Bombardiers. Jack Fitzgerald taken down by Rivera and Salviati, and they better shake 75's head. Once again, Attleboro sent everybody. I wow. think they sent everybody, Paul. Yeah. Okay, Coach Pinnabel, he's going to notice that. Look for a play action pass oh, out of that. Oh, you've got to be looking for that out of that. Just to send you a tight end, just out, you know, yep. just look right down the seam. But it's fourth and three, no game. Wow. Attleboro has just turned this game around. If not for those three turnovers, this is an end over end punt. Salviati, no fair catch at his own 30, breaks a tackle across the 40. Stays in his feet, gets out to the 43 yard line. All right, the Bombardiers, I think there's a lot of talented, skilled possession players in this team. They got the right kids returning the punts, Mike. No, they certainly do, and they're only back 30 yards, and they make, and once again, of course, it's dark enough now, it's not a dusk, so it's yeah. a little easier to see that uh, the ball coming down, but it's still, you've got to make a very athletic play yeah. as soon as that ball touches your hands. It's like being a middle infielder in baseball. Yeah. No time for bobbles. How many punts is that, six or a Five. Five, wow. Five punts. Bombardier starting at their own 43-yard line, we'll call it. First and 10, they lead 13-7, <laughs> 5.20 to go in the third quarter. Harvey back to Bubble pass. Bubble screen again. Bubble screen to pa Aiden Pantages. Beautiful tackle by the inside linebacker, Bruski to get back in the play. Still got five yards. Still got five yards. Wow. Uh, and uh, if not for Bruski, Mike, he might still be running. No, you're right about that. It's the fifth completion now. Uh, Matt Harvey is starting to relax and play the football we know he can play. Yeah. For 50 yards, he's got three first downs. Once again, throwing the ball inside. He's thrown it inside very successfully. Miranda is the center. The left guard, Haste. The right guard, Tatro. The left tackle, Gray, the sophomore. And the right tackle, Fitzgerald. Four of those five names, first-year starters. Might have another update from North. By the way, Gray doesn't look like a sophomore. Quarterback draw, lost a yard. And nice play. Nice play, number 59, Reed Clemente. Mansfield has taken a 21-14 lead over North. No gain, third and five. Was that, so, was that still, that was Harvey who ran yes, that it quarterback draw. Yep. Wouldn't make any sense for <laughs> Salviati to do it because they wouldn't expect him to pass. Clock is uh, moving. We're inside four minutes to go in the third quarter. 13-7 Bombardiers. 4-4-3 four, four, defense for Fian. Same defense Mike and I played in high school, only they flip-flop more than we did. Yeah, and they're also a lot bigger. <laughs> That's true. Faster. <laughs> I don't know better about looking. faster. I don't know about that, but they are bigger and stronger. And better looking. <laughs> Blitzing and running right at the blitz. Great defensive call by the Shamrocks. Double A gap blitz. And that's the uh, North Attleboro trick on Ladino's defense. Ladino's auto Whoops, repair. Okay. The defensive coordinator, Mike, is Teddy Bruski. One of the all-time great guys. Yeah. And a hell of a football player. Yeah, kid. And his high school music teacher said he could have been just that good as a saxophone player. Really? If you wanted to pursue it. Yes. Which is high praise. Yeah. And, of course, he broke every... Uh, <coughs> He had 19 sacks his senior year in college. At Arizona? At left defensive end. Wow. Here's uh, Laco back to punt, taking his time. Beautiful high spiral. Mikhail Connor calls a fair catch. And uh, Malachi Jefferson, yards. number 15 for the Bombardiers, can't crack the starting lineup. He's a senior. This kid means it when he's on the field in special teams, yes. Mike. Yes. So five punts for Fian. How many for the Bombardiers? Uh, just, uh, just two. Wow. Of course, they get intercepted twice and <laughs> fumble. fumble. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather punt. <laughs> so uh, down 13-6. Fian has the ball at their own 16-yard line, heading left to right. Oops. Good to have my head down here. Back to pass. 
out to the flat. Tough throw, huge hit by number nine. Uh, Aiden Hawkwater, also a catcher in baseball. Boy, who caught that? 14? Ouch. Hawkwater's a catcher? Yeah. I knew I liked it for some yeah. other reason. That Mo Mike, number 26 on the catch. Number 26, yeah. yeah. And that's a gain of what? One or two? I'm going to give him two because it was a painful two. Okay. So we'll call the ball at the 18. Ball's on the left hash. 2.15 to go, clock moving. Left to right, two wide outs to the right. That's the wide side. McHale on the outside, and the slot is Evans. Two running backs. That's the old pistol formation. Power pistol to the right. Yep. <clears throat> they Now they run the bubble screen. Ouch. Oh, forcing him inside was Laco, finishing him off. Number 11, Brody McKenna. Boy, oh boy. Cole McKenna is a senior. Brody is a junior. One of them's a lacrosse player. One of them's a baseball player. You think their parents have to drive around a lot when they were kids? Well, once again, they've got now, they've got four completions. The last two completions are for a total of uh, two yards. Wow. So now it's third and eight. And they're still at the 18-yard line. This is a huge play. 122, 121, 120 to go first quarter. Wide to the left is number 14, Danny Fast. Four-man front for the Bombardiers. Three linebackers, four DBs, press coverage on the wideouts. Back to pass, Iavoni. Incomplete on the coverage, Salviati up top. Laco underneath, another punting situation. He just really can't, he can't throw the ball wide. Uh, it's, uh, you gotta give kid, uh, kids things they can do well. And uh, you know, I, I look at this to see how well they've run the I formation. Yeah over the last three or four years where they just attack you yeah. with reach and run up front and a hell of a blocking fullback. I, that's what I expected. Yeah. I thought there was going to be two tight ends, maybe a tackle at one oh, of the Oh, punt ends. is nearly blocked by Ramirez. Get away from it, Ethan. And for the first time, Attleboro doesn't field that punt. Good for Shamrock roll down by number 88, Sean Judge. Bombardiers take over a good field position, though. Their own 49-yard line, first and 10 ahead by six. Well, it's a 37-yard punt, <laughs> and it was almost blocked. But yep. Once again, I, I just, sometimes coaches defeat themselves, ourselves. Yep. And I just look at this, and with all the big, strong linemen, I wasn't going to be surprised if they came out with two tight ends yep. and just tried to, what I call KP football. Yeah. All right, we're running off left tackle. Yeah. All right. We're gonna, I know we're, it, you, you know, know it. it. Stop us. <laughs> there we go. A fullback, we have two of them, and they go, both got a lead block yep. and punish your 150-pound linebackers. But they don't do that. They're running the spread, and they don't have the people to do it. They lost the two best tailbacks, yep. and the quarterback can't throw well enough. Back to pass, Harvey Every. to the right flat. Caught by Salviati underneath. Moves from his old 49 to the plus 45. Initial hit was made by McCaffrey. Six yard gain for Salviati, perfect bullet. Just a five yard stop pattern. Yep. Judge in there in the tackle as well. Second and four. Once again, easier, good play calls, easier throws. Don't go down and meet the uh, playing a three deep zone. The uh, outside linebacker on that side is 15 yards inside the receiver, so he's not going to be able to get out there and happen. Real nice play call, perfect execution. Number 54 was in the offensive line for the Bombardiers in that play filling in. That's Jose Perez, a six foot, 208 pound sophomore. The Bombardiers will let the clock run out in the third quarter. We have 12 minutes in regulation to go in this game. The Bombardiers are ahead by six. Just a great, great comeback here in these last two periods. We'll be right back. Does your back hurt after a long night's sleep? Ow. Has your mattress seen better days? Is your current bedroom furniture a mixture of different furniture sets? The Bedding Center, located on Pleasant Street and proud sponsor of this radio station and high school sports, offers a wide array of mattresses along with beds, bedroom furniture, and odd-sized mattresses and box springs. You can reach them online at bedding-center.com or by phone at 508 226 8090. 
Falls AC, 8 Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Opened in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC. C, 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. Back just in time to begin the fourth quarter on Double ACS 15 Sports. Attleboro now moving left to right, second and four at the Shamrock, 45-yard line. Harvey shotgun snap, back to pass, has time, right flat. What a catch by Salviati. Nice what a throw. throw by Harvey. Five yards, that's a hard throw. to throw it over the corner linebacker. Yep. Perfectly done. First down again, that's their fourth first down passing. And that is five consecutive completions wow. for Matt Harvey. And you know, it's only, the five completions are only for 35 yards. It's an average of seven yards, but every yard has been critical. Yes. Mike's still looking for more slants, more posts. Well, that's, once again, I like the way Harvey can throw the ball. Yeah. And I think the stop pattern, the quick, bullets yeah that's the stuff he, and he can throw the ball fine deep but they, they have a very good deep secondary here's the play they started the game with it didn't work they go the bubble other way screen. to Salviati on a bubble screen gets a nice block out front still on his feet that was 65 who threw a block Jason Tatro 13 yard gain is that Salviati yep. again wow and he's getting up slow and coming to the bench but 14 he, yard game, he almost like 50. Jaden Tatro and Jack Fitzgerald, they're seniors, they're first year starters. Tatro is 6'3, 183. Fitzgerald, 6'2, 184. One plays defense, nose tackle and right guard. The other plays right tackle and defensive end. And if you're an athlete and you're quick and you're beating your opponent off the ball, that's plenty big enough and they're right. showing it. So they're at the 25, so 14 yeah. yard gain. Yeah. I had my head down, Mike, take they it. They just ran the, uh, the the slice inside with, uh, I believe they ran that with number seven, Adrian Rivera. Just came off. Uh, yep. It's, it's like a pistol formation. He came back over the center, and I guess he only picked up a yard. Maybe two, judging by the yard marker. Yeah, I'll give him two. Second down, eight yards to go. 15 oh. carries for about 52 yards for Adrian. 10, 15 to go. Clock is moving. Bombardiers up six. Well, the Bombardiers right now, they want to get this to up nine, at least yeah. a field goal. Yes. They're inside the two, you know, they're, they're getting closer. And uh, Fian hasn't thrown the ball, have not shown they can throw the ball. So here's a good timeout. Yep. Second timeout for the uh, Blue Bombardiers today, right? Yes, it is. We'll be right back after this on Double ACS 15 Sports. Crystal Glass, 110 North Main Street in Attleboro, has supported local high school sports for many years. Bristol Glass has been chosen for glass replacement projects for home and business for over 60 years. From shower doors to auto glass and mirror replacement, Bristol Glass is ready to do the job. They accept most insurance plans and serve several communities around the Attleboro area. They're open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can contact them at 508-222-5810 and on the web at bristolglass.com. As a trained professional, I know what that dead air means. We're back on Double ACS 15 Sports. Paul Healy along with Michael Healy, Dave Angel on camera, Peter Gray on Peter Gray, Peter Bray on graphics, Jim Jones, our engineer in charge. It is a beautiful September night, 9.55 to go in a really fun high school football game to watch. I, I was concerned about the change of the coaches and what how the kids react. The kids have been wonderful and the coaching's been good. Harvey rolls right, He's throws to the flat, and there's Ramirez with a catch, stays in bounds to get a few extra yards. Nice tackle by I number 12, McCaffrey. You know, McCaffrey for Fian, 5'10", 180. He can play for my team anytime. Oh, just oh he didn't get the first. Third and one. 
Okay, so what do you get? Seven yards on that. Yes. And getting Ramirez involved is a good idea. Yes. Mike and I, we called the JD game against Franklin a few years ago where Ramirez caught a 37-yard touchdown play on the last play of the game from Harvey for the win. And by the way, that Franklin team, I saw them at Wachusett. Yep. They're really good again. And I, do, I just forgotten how scrappy and good these younger kids were coming on. Yeah. And they're really playing their hearts out here today. This is the first time we've seen uh, a fouled up formation. Yep. I'd have to get a timeout. Pistol formation. Three wideouts to the left. They go, to, oh, another bubble screen. Uh, they lateral, and the ball is loose. Oh, my God. The wideout cut in and made the catch. Ramirez is the running, oh, excuse me. Rivera is the running back. He's running wide of the wideout. He pitched it to him. They missed the pitch. And he had the first he down had before he pitched it. Exactly. And Attleboro, who's oh been controlling God. the line of scrimmage, used a trick play, and it leads to the fourth turnover of the game. That's called outthinking yourself. Boy, oh boy, what an awful decision. What are you going to do? We live and we learn. <laughs> Failed short flea flicker in my notes. Second lateral loss fumble. He had the first down. Wow. And I'm sorry, Shamrock fans don't know who recovered that. Bishop Fee and Ball, where? 10, 20, 25 yard line? Yeah, they lost a yard on it. First and 10, and they're running with Bruski. Bruski breaks the tackle, and during the commercial break, Mike was wondering why Bruski wasn't handling the ball more. Well, whatever you're going to do, they picked up. How much did he picked up? 21 yards there. Wow! The line of scrimmage was a 25. Yep, and he's now at the 44. 44. 19 yards on Bruski's uh, carry there. And what a momentum play! Oh my God! What a, what a very hard to understand that decision. You know, it's a well. You, if it it's works, third and one. Yeah. And you're third and one at Paul. Yeah. Let's get the first down. He had the first down. Yep. Well, you're thinking they're third and one. The defensive backs are going to be up. You complete the pitch. It's a touchdown. Dagger. You're right. Same formation. Backs on either side. Tight end is to the right. Back to pass. Ivioni slant underneath. And it's coming. Oh, and he couldn't hold on. Salviati with the defense. Pass intended for Shane Evans. Incomplete. Second and ten. And that's going to bring up second and ten for Phoenix. They've only thrown for 10 yards in 11 attempts. And they threw for 11 yards against North. Second down, 10 yards to go. Their own 44-yard line, we'll call it. 8.06 to go, Fian trailing 13-7. Well, they have plenty of time. I'm just surprised they're not, uh, you know, they're running the spread formation. Yeah. I'd be running two tight ends with a tight wing if I were them. They're yeah. just powering. Press coverage on the corners. He's uh -oh. offside. Laco comes from the far side. No flag is down. He makes the tackle. Coming from the right side, the running back was running left. Mankins gets up slowly. No, excuse me, that's 77. Goslin getting up slowly, but he's okay. Third that? and 10. Was that uh, McCaffrey again running? 26. It was Evans. 26. It was Evans there. He got nothing. And. Laco made at least two tackles for loss like that against Durfee last week. Well, he just timed it perfectly. I thought he was offside. He yeah. came so hard. Just ran the play down. So they're at their own 44, maybe their own 43. This is a big play. Laco backs off now from the striker position, a right side linebacker. They're, they're running the straight zone. Back to pass, right side, tipped. Oh, Intercepted wow. by McKenna. Brody down the left sideline. Going for his second pick six in two weeks. He'll have to settle for a return to the 11 yard line. A one handed interception. He spared it. And I think Mankins made the tackle eventually, Michael. So he intercepted it. Where was it? 44. He intercepted that at about midfield and returned it to the 13 yard line. 37 yard return. Play of the game. Yep. Well, I shouldn't say the play of the game, but it's it's the biggest play in the second half, yeah. that's for sure. So last week, uh, McKenna. That was a, a heck of a play. Oh, yeah, one-handed catch. He had a 35-yard 
uh, interception return. Another wing T formation for the Toss Bombardiers. Left. Toss left. Laco breaks a tackle in the backfield, is hemmed up, and that time he tried to make something out of nothing. And there was nothing. Yeah, that lower your shoulder, take a two or three yard once loss. Again, running, I just don't, they came out in a wing right, he came in motion, they tossed to the boundary. And that, it was into the boundary, and it had no chance. And what did he lose? Four yards? Whoops. Yeah, the line of scrimmage was the 13, right? Yeah. Yep. And number 72, who we believe is Brendan Koss, he's listed as 39 in the program. Uh, before the game, Coach Pinnabel told the Sun Chronicle they must control the edge on defense. Yeah. They control the edge on defense they on that play. They certainly did there. So well, this is second and 14. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bubble screen here again. Wide outs to the right. Looks left, that's the short side. Heavy rush by Mankins. Gets away, nice block, Rivera. And then just gets rid of the ball. You gotta be on the line of scrimmage, thankfully. They're gonna talk about it. We might have no. another intentional grounding. No. He had a receiver number five out there. That's Panthers. Panthers. And they dropped the flag. Oh my goodness. Mike, I didn't think it reached the line of scrimmage. No, they got beyond the, the, the second the down. It didn't reach the down mark for 10. Boy, oh boy. Boy, that hurt. Second intentional grounding. They have four turnovers, the Bombardiers. Well, the best thing about the game outside of the intentional oh grounding gosh. is they haven't had any line of scrimmage problems holding or anything. Yeah. But that, once again, is a huge penalty. That goes back to the 32? Well, he threw it. It's from where the quarterback throws it. Yeah. He threw it from the 27. So it is so third down. Wow, 10. Where are we here? So we'll go to the 23. And they started on the 14, and the ball is now on the 32. So that's third and, and 29. Yeah, so that uh, was an 18-yard penalty. Or a 15-yard penalty. Third and 29 yards to go with 6.07 to go. <laughs> and remember, folks, they were 13 yards from the end zone after the McKenna interception. Coach Winters calls timeout. We'll be right back after this on ACS 15 Sports. Balls AC, 8-Stack Road in North Attleboro, supports high school sports in our community at every level. Open in the early 80s, owner Angelo Cavallari is proud of their 40 years of service to the Attleboros. Falls AC is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. They have lunch and dinner daily, banquet rooms for your meetings or get-togethers, and dart leagues. The entire staff at Falls AC wishes the high school athletes the best of luck in every game. Falls AC 8 Stack Road, North Attleboro, 508-695-2688. Welcome back to ACS 15 Sports. Paul Healy along with big brother Michael Healy, who will be leaving us October 15, moving out to Colorado Springs, Colorado. No, no, Fort Collins, Fort Collins Colorado. Colorado. Sorry. Home, home, of, home of the Colorado State, State Rams. Rams. All right, that's a big play. Trips to the right. We get a tight end to the left. No split left. And it's third and 29. And all the linebackers are back in this 4-4. Yep. And throw the skinny post. If they intercept it, so what? Harvey is back to pass. Looks to scramble. Who's that who takes him down? That's number 55. And now uh, that is 55. Where is he here? Tristan Upton. 5'11", 250 pounds, senior starts at left guard on offense. Well, you gotta punt this away. I don't care how close you are. So they're at the 34. Yes. So that's a loss of two. But this is a great time for punt. You gotta make sure you get up. Did Fien call a timeout or Attleboro? I would think it's Attleboro. Hold on, one second. Be in. Okay. That's the first of the game, I believe. Wow. So from first and goal at the 13-yard line, and I just got my cord caught on my stool, to fourth and 31. Four, it the, says fourth and 28. I don't know if that's 28 or not, because they were on the 14, right? 13. 13. We're on the 33. Maybe 34. So 34. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was a retreat. So that's 31. It was a significant retreat. Yes, yes. Fourth and 31. Yes, you're right. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, they just corrected the scoreboard. And I think a punt is the right thing here. Oh, you got to play field position. 
Wind is not much of a factor on this gorgeous September night. 5.57 to go, fourth quarter, 13-7 Bombardiers. And they're confused. They wouldn't fake it, would they? Oh no, I just, I, if, I'm, if I were Fiend, I'd be going after it. Yeah. Delay a game, or movement. Adewar was pointing at Fian. Then even if it is on Fian, instead of being fourth and 31, it'll be fourth and, it is off Fian, Fian off size. Wow. Well, that makes it fourth and 26. Yep. And they're still in punting formation. Oh, absolutely. And the line of scrimmage is now the 29. Now you want to try to just uh, punt it to one of the corners, and, which is exactly what he's doing. Gets, oh! Well, I got about the 15 or so. Ball is out of bounds at the, just 16. over the 15 yard line. We'll call it the 16. It's a 13 yard punt. Ethan really didn't get it off, but nobody got hurt. Yep. You've got and your opponent 84 yards from the goal line with 550 to go. 552 in the fourth quarter. Fian takes over, and we're calling it their own 16-yard line, first and 10. Incoming again for the Bombardiers, number 73, Jacob Wild. Miranda's on the defensive line as well, along with Fitzgerald and Huntington. Haste is a linebacker, McKenna's a linebacker, and of course, Laco. Back to pass, they have a new quarterback in. They throw to the right, intercepted Salviati, a touchdown, both Bandiers! The new quarterback was number 24, Braden Nassany, a freshman. So what a tough way to get started for a freshman, but once again, Attleboro's defense and quickness They've been all over them. They know they can't throw the ball deep. They're pressing everything. They're attacking every throw. And wow. it's 19 to seven. Might as well go for two. Yeah. You know, they get a very, oh, okay, they're going for one. They get a very good kicker. 19, yeah. So uh, that's Salviati with the touchdown. Is that his first of the season? I don't know. And again, Salviati only played eight games last year, had 800 total yards, more than 800. The PAT is good by Salguero. Yes. And it is the Bombardiers with a 20 to seven lead. This has been a crazy second half. Well, I'm just so excited to see this team playing so well. And nothing seems to deter them. They've had four really bonehead turnovers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they they don't get discouraged, and they just keep coming right back at yeah. you. And uh, it's wonderful. You know what? One, they don't get discouraged. <laughs> and two, they don't pitch and moan. They don't no. complain. No, they're having a heck of a time. Yep. They're having a heck of a time. Apologize if that language was more than I should have used. 5.44 to go on that touchdown by Salviati. Again, more than 800 yards offensively in eight games last year. There's a big defensive touchdown. And now the Bombardiers will kick off left to right, just 5.44 to go. And boy, Salviati, uh, we're late in the game. They've seen the patterns Fian, have, Fian has been running, and he just jumped the pattern. Well, I think, once again... Seguero's kicking off, by the way. Yeah, what, F what Fian has to do is they've got to recalibrate their season. They're a running team. Yeah. And I don't care, you know, that's... We used to play wishbone teams yeah. in the middle league. Yeah. And we were at more athletic. Yeah. And they just beat us up. Right. That's <laughs> they just beat us up. What are you gonna do? Which is one thing I said to you during a commercial yeah. break. They've got five returning starters on the offensive line. Adelboro's yeah. got four first year players in the starting line. 
Two tight ends. Yeah, it's a, a, four, a wing back. It's a 48-minute game. Beat, yeah. Try to beat them up. You're bigger and stronger. We were kidding about the, what KP loves to do. They'll yeah. put the wing right on the line of scrimmage, and they'll have about a two-foot split everywhere, yeah. and they all just reach block. Yes. And they let the, the you, you have the quarterback mm -hmm. and a fullback and a tailback, yeah. and the fullback will find the first man off the line of scrimmage, yeah. and Rudy Gately runs wherever he wants. Exactly. And they put eight <laughs> men on the line of scrimmage. And they've now only they been doing that for the nine. This is my 10th year with yeah, you. Yes. It's only been 10 years they've been doing it. Everybody knows they're going to do it. Yeah. So what? Yeah, but you put eight men in the line of scrimmage. Now the defense has to defend nine gaps. That's it. You've got to have contained in the seven gaps in between. It's very hard to do. You cannot blitz it. Down on one knee, scoops the ball it. up at his own 21. They finally kicked away from McHale. Breaks out of a tackle. Nice return. Want to get that number. So he caught it on about the 15, didn't no, he? No, 21. Oh, 21. 13 yard return. That was number 36 on the return. Hawkwater in on the tackle. Also number 23 for the Bombardiers, Nick Castro. Well, the Bombardiers are in charge here. The game is not over. The ball's on the yes. what, 38 yard line. So that was 21 to 38. And let's. Uh, just see how the boys handle the last six minutes of this game or five minutes and 36 seconds. <clears throat> yep, 536 to go. See, Great. They're, they're not even acknowledging the slot receiver out here. Wow. Not even acknowledging, like, you know. Yep. Back to pass, the freshman is still in. Miscommunication, overthrown. He was trying to hit number three, Connor McHale. Nothing wrong with that. Again, the quarterback is Braden. Nassany, a 6'2", 165-pound freshman. They completed their first two passes, and since that point, they're one for 12 throwing with two interceptions. Uh, I don't know how long the touchdown was with them that return. How long was that touchdown running the return? Wow, I didn't write that down. Well, the line of scrimmage was the 16. So he I'd jumped the pattern. I'll give him 20 yards. Yeah, I would say 20 yards. So they had 50 some odd yards uh, yeah. given up uh, on interceptions. Nassany back to pass. Another interception into double coverage by Salviati. Hesitates, goes down the line of scrimmage. All right, so the Bombardiers have four turnovers. How many now for Fian? Well, that's four, isn't it? They get the three interceptions, they had a fumble. Yep. For a return for touchdown. Wow. Is that Salviati again? Salviati again. again. And he intercepted it at his own 37 yeah. and returned it to the plus 44. Okay, so that's a 13, 17, uh, 19 yard return. This is us. You know what, Michael? Yeah. There are going to be a lot of people who do a double take reading the sports page tomorrow morning. Yes. They Although will. it's 2022 when they see the score on social media in a few minutes. Yes. What? Uh... <laughs> well, I just, uh, you know, and this is a team that was absolutely taken apart by Bishop Fien last year. Yep. Bombardiers, where are they? That the plus. Fien cannot let them, he cannot let this destroy their season. They got to recalibrate. Harvey rolls left. Throw it away. That gets over the line of scrimmage. Yes. No intentional grounding. Second and 10 from the fee and 44. So four turnovers for the Bombardiers. Two incredibly uh, damaging intentional grounding calls. Yes. They get 85 yards passing. I mean, their, their offense obviously hasn't done much. Yeah, well, yeah. They haven't done much. When you only get 150 yards total offense, you're not doing that much. Yep. <clears throat> but their athletes are making plays on returns. Yep. They're making plays on interceptions. I mean, they're, they're making, making plays, plays on, on blitzes. And these are athletic plays. They just don't show up in the stat sheet. Yep. Attleboro, again, that double bunch formation. And they'll run right up the middle. Rivera puts his head down. Four he yards. gets to the 40-yard line, plus four. He's going to know he's been in a football game tomorrow. Third down, six yards to go coming up. He's got 60, 50, 65 yards in his last 15 carries. Wow. And that first lost fumble lateral. Yep. I mean, how many games can a team have where they get two interceptions and they lose two lateral fumbles? Yeah. In, inside their territory, no less. Yeah. One of them. 
and they still come out 20 to 7. What we got, got a text from Agent 6, one of the listeners to our yeah. show, father of a former North Attleboro captain. Yes. North Attleboro at Mansfield, 21-21 tie in the fourth, and he writes, nail biter. No kidding. What else is new? <laughs> Here we go. Third and a long six for the Bombardiers. This is a huge play. The clock's moving with 422. Toss to the short side again. They like to throw short side. Rivera cuts inside. Rivera's got a first down for the Bombardiers. Is that Rivera again? Yes, Adrian Rivera. We nice. saw him as Goodness. a freshman during that pandemic year on the yes. JV team. No, he just, I mean, that was a seven yard game. Oh, oh they they got him short. Uh, inches. All right, this is where you go for it. Yeah. Mike, I thought that was number one who ran the ball. No, that's, oh, was it Pantages? I thought Pantages was no, the wideout on that side. He is a wideout. You're yeah, right. It was seven. So Jeez. fourth and inches. We got to call it the 34. Well, that's a six-yard gain, but and he went out of bounds to stop the clock at 4:13. Well, that's something I'll have to learn about. Mike, there's that wing T formation oh, just again. Sneak on touch. I know they're right up there. Oh, oh wow! And we'll leave the name out of it. Yeah. But Fian jumps. Hard count. Yep. Wow. A gap blitz. Yep. And it is a first down, Bombardiers. That's the third de defensive penalty first down on Fian. And this is a team that last year was flawless yep. against Attleboro. As I wrote in my notes, the best looking Fian team I've seen in years. Wow. I thought, I said it was, and I thought they'd be at least as good this year. Yep. I know they lost a great tight end, a great wide out, and a great quarterback, yep. but they had everybody else back. So they're at the- uh, Double wing. And they run to the right. Wow, great to see. That's what uh, Catholic Memorial runs a yes. lot of that. Rivera out of the double wing. Where's the line of scrimmage? The 29. You got at least five. So it was first and 10. Rivera ran that from the 29 to the 24. Rivera's had a nice day. And again, he lost nine yards in his first carry. We had to give him that. He never touched the ball. It was well, a fumble. He, he actually, I think it hit his backhand. Okay. So what, what are his totals now? Well, since that point, he's had 50, 16, uh, set, excuse me, 17 carries for 76 yards, which is four and a half yards against a big, tough defense up front. And, uh, and once again, they're in the double wing. Yep. I love this. Laco going deep. Full they get back. to the fullback again. The fullback is Brody McKenna, the 5'10", 168-pound junior. I think he's got the first down, or he's very close. He's the middle linebacker as well. They're moving the chains, folks, and there's only 320 left in this game. Bombardiers lead 20 to 7. Brody McKenna. And I'm so sorry, I can't remember which one's the baseball player or which one's the lacrosse player, but with a catch McKenna made on that interception. That's, he's spirited. <laughs> yes, I gotta think he's the baseball player, but I'm probably wrong about that. Well, Brody McKenna has really, yeah. I mean, so many of the guys have played so well here. And, yeah. and th they've broken the uh, yeah. uh, the Bishop P in spirit. I think this is, that's more of the wing T look, Mike, is they're at the, no, the, the, two, the two backs are real back, but there's no splits whatsoever. Yeah. Laco tries Just to run down. wide right. Don't. Yeah. And he turned to five yard well, oh, forward progress. Yeah. He's tackled at the 25. That's a loss. That's a loss of uh, seven, Mike. My goodness gracious. Oh, well. Yeah. I feel bad for Ethan. He ends up with minus four on four carries today. And he's done so many things right, but he, once again, that that play for whatever reason has had no chance. Yep. And uh, it was a it was timeout call, by the way, second timeout at least. It was, so it's going to be to second go. down. Where are they placing the ball? Ball's at the 24-yard line, so that's second down is 17. Yeah, because that was first and yeah. 10. Uh, 2.40 to go. We'll be right back on Double ACS 15 Sports. Are you looking for meal options for you and your family? Consider Rico's Subs and Pizza on Route 1 in North Attleboro. Open since 1971 and a proud sponsor of high school sports in the Attleboro area. 
Rico's cooks up many flavors of pizzas, subs, and calzones, all in store and using fresh ingredients. They're open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sundays 12 noon to 10 p.m. You can also order ahead by calling 508-695-1296. Welcome back. Again, that wing, funky wing T formation. Somebody jumped. There's another flag. Been very few flags in this game. No, you, you're right procedure. about that. By the way, I don't think I've ever seen uh, Attleboro or any team have three critical interceptions in four plays. Wow. Which has really broken this game wide open. So they intercepted Fian three times on four passes. Yes. Wow. Yes, they did. And once again, right now, here. is that, oh, my God, that, they were, that was a legal procedure Yeah, legal there. procedure. So it's second and 22. Brody McKenna gets about five back. So Off left guard. Attleboro leads 27. Clock stops again with 2.34 to go. And since I don't think we'll have time to sneak these at 30-second timeouts, we want to thank Claudino's Auto body in Attleboro. They gave me new brake lines a few years ago. That's how I got home. All right, Claudinos. The betting center uh, on Pleasant Street in Attleboro. Rico's Pizza on Route uh, 1A in North Attleboro. Bristol Glass on North Main Street in Attleboro. W.H. Riley and Sons. College football was invented in 1869. Four years later, W.H. Riley went into business in North Attleboro. And Falls AC also in North Attleboro. Great venue for fun games and food. So it's going to be third down and a lot. They're at the 25. Uh, well, it says 16 up on the scoreboard. Yeah. I think it's 17, but who's counting? Okay, they're at the 25, so that was a four-yard four, run. Yeah. Okay. Wing T formation. Laco going deep in motion. They give to the tailback, the left tailback running right, following the fullback McKenna. And the guard, where's number 72 playing? Number 72 is in now on the line. James Cole, a 6'1, 256 pound sophomore. Look at Rivera got a yard there. Okay. 68 yard, hard earned yards. So it's fourth down, 16 or 17. Whatever Peter Bray says, says in the graphics, says, believe it. It's got to be 16. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be 16. <clears throat> and once, once again, in this play right here, uh, you know, you got less than two minutes to go. And this is the 11th play of the drive. Clock is moving inside a hundred, well, 1 minute 50, 145 now. Use your timeout once it gets down the court. Well, yep. I would assume the coach is yep. waiting to call the timeout. So 72 is now in it right tackle that's James Cole starting right tackle is Jack Fitzgerald who's played tremendously on both sides of the ball. She's James Cole some of these sophomores have really grown since yeah. last year. Yeah. The Attleboro student body to our left they're having a good time tonight. Mike, let's start going over some of the final stats now so our crew can get out of here as soon as this game's over. Well, I've got Adrian Rivera for 19 carries for 68 yards. Ethan Loco, Loco, four for four, minus four. Salviati, one for minus four. And Brody McKenna, two carries, first down for 10 yards. Uh, By the way, yes, Kevin, that's going to leave him. Mark Callahan writes in, Brody is baseball co uh Cole is lacrosse. So Brody, I guess that, the baseball player, the way yes. he made that catch on the interception. Well, Continue. that was just fear anyway, but the quarterbacking, really nice job. 11 for 18 for 85 yards. I know there was a couple interceptions in there and that insane hook and lateral fumble. Yeah. But Matt Hayes, he had a couple of uh, intentional Harvey. ground. Harvey. Yep. Learn, learning the game, but he had a period there in this early in the second half that really turned the game around. Yeah. Really nice job. Uh, Fian. They just, I mean, this game has been a nightmare for them. You know, they get probably about 86 yards on the ground, mostly. Bruce and again, no Nick Yanchuk and no Cam Burns, only their two best running backs. Yes, and, you know, uh, Bruschi had two first downs and a 10-yard touchdown. Harvey so, on fourth down looking for Rivera. Touchdown. He makes the catch! 
Harvey on fourth and 16 for the 24. A touchdown pass to Aiden Ramirez. My goodness gracious. Wow. What a night for the Bombardiers. A 26 to seven lead over Bishop Fian. Nobody would have predicted this. What, what a, a wow. tremendous, tremendous effort. And uh, <laughs> make that 109 yards, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> and a touchdown. And five critical first downs throwing. Wow, Attleboro, 26 to seven. Seguero with the extra point is good. And that was just a jump ball. Yes. And once again, Attleboro's got really good athletes out there. Yeah. And uh, they just made really good athletic plays. I am so impressed. So surprised yes. and impressed the by how well they've done. The Bombardiers, four, four turnovers on offense, two intentional grounding penalties, and they have a 27-7 lead over Bishop Fian. Wow. With 125 to go. Heartbreaking for uh, Bishop Fian. They've got to go back to the drawing board. You know, and it's one of those situations. Back in the day, I, I, I keep getting old here, yeah. but there was nothing wrong with running the football when that's what you do best. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you spread people all over the field, they kept running two wide outs and a slot with a quarterback and a back on either side of them, and it gives both out, outside linebackers a short corner every play. Yes, and Laco and, at outside linebacker, oh striker they called him, yes. took advantage of it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's one of those situations. I mean, I thought this was going to be a very tough year for Attleboro, yep. and I was totally wrong, and I'm so yep. glad to be wrong. Mike, that was an 11-play, 56-yard drive. Started with 5.21 on the clock. Now there's 1.25 to go. Here comes uh, Oh, have my head down. He McHale. Picked it up on about the 14 and he made a good outstanding return out to the 37. Connor McHale has been outstanding all day for Fian on kickoff returns. So how many yards on that, Mike? 24 yard return out to the third minus 37. <clears throat> so he's, I, he's gotta be over 100 yards on kickoff returns. Yeah, on the four that I have for him, 46, 66, no, nope. 90 yards. Okay. But once again, you know, when you have to pick up two of them on a hop, yeah. and you're racing upfield to get them, yeah. It's what's more important is they came out to the 30, 32, 32, 38, and 37 yard yep. lines. So he did a real nice job for his team to get him a good field. Feed on their own 38 yard line, first and 10. Confusion in the backfield. The freshman quarterback has to run right. He is taken down in the backfield. My goodness. And remember, uh, Eric Ev was Everton. Yes. We, uh, were you doing the new game at North Attleboro with me when? Fian on two consecutive plays lost their top two quarterbacks. No, and I, was, I wasn't doing Okay, I was doing yet. that for North TV. And Everton, son of the baseball coach, a yeah. West Point man, Everton had to come in a quarterback as a sophomore, had a rough go of it. Oh, I can. Why and can he I, went on to be an outstanding Bishop Fian quarterback. And I wouldn't be surprised if the same story happens with Braden uh, Nassani as the time goes on. I remember they have both. Uh, the two McGowans, one played quarterback for North and his brother played quarterback for Fian on yes. the Super Bowl team back around 2000, 1999. That was the best oh. Fian team I've ever seen. Huge hit. And that's Rivera from a linebacker position. Also 73. Jacob Wild has done well. I'm trying to see if 75 is out there for the Bombardiers. They Fitzpatrick lost. was outstanding. They lost two more yards there. Wow. And that's going to run out the clock. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Attleboro Blue Bombardiers have upset the Bishop Fee and Shamrocks 27 to seven. Let the crowd take it from here. Wow. Just magnificent effort. Yep. <clears throat> I am so uh, just su pleasantly surprised. Yes. It was so opportunistic. The defense, yep, uh, just really well done. I'm surprised by a lot of things, but when when you have four turnovers, yeah, 
and two intentional grounding penalties. <laughs> yes. And you win 27-7 to over a team that wiped you out 34-0 the year Last before. Last year, exactly. And they've got their whole offensive line back. Yeah. And that's what you're dealing with. Uh, just, I just tip my hat. What a great start for Coach Jim Winter. 35-6 over Durfee. And now 27-7 uh, over uh, Bishop Fian. Fian scored first, a 10-yard touchdown by Bruski after Attleboro tried a funky lateral on their first play for scrimmage, which led to a fumble and a nine-yard loss. Took Fian three plays to go 20 yards. Bruski's 10-yard touchdown, two carries for 17 yards. Gave him yes. a seven-nothing lead. Back and forth, back and forth. Attleboro tied it in the second quarter on a fumble return. Uh, Laco stripped the ball, Salviati picked it up, so Salviati had two touchdowns. That's and right. scored from 19 yards out on the fumble return. The PAT was good. In the third quarter, the Bombardiers had a five play, 41 yard drive. After a great Laco punt return, a four yard touchdown run by Rivera who used his 147 pounds to move the pile three yards into the end zone. That was incredible. Uh, and then again, there was interceptions and turnovers here and there. Uh, it was a 13-7 game, a nail biter. Attleboro failed to take advantage of opportunities. And then uh, Salviati, a second consecutive touchdown. Fian brought in a new quarterback. Salviati jumped the pattern and a 20 yard interception return. That made it 20 to seven. And then you just saw the 11 play a uh, 56-yard drive took almost five minutes off the clock. A 24-yard touchdown pass to number five, Aiden Ramirez. Mike, you have the final word. Well, when you have a fumble return and three interceptions returned for 95 yards and two touchdowns, <laughs> yeah. you're going to win some football games. <laughs> and we haven't seen that kind of defensive performance by Attleboro <clears throat> against uh, uh, an opponent like this in uh, quite some time, and I just tip my hat to the yeah. kids and, and the coaches. And I will say this. The good news is for Attleboro, they attack on defense. Yes. Now, that does lead you vulnerable to play action passes and deceptions, but it hasn't happened yet in two games, and let's celebrate the Bombardiers 2-0 and o under Jim Winter in 2022. Who do we have next, KP? Uh, where's my thingy here? Hold on here. Da, 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 da. The crew wants to get I, out of here, Mike. I, I've got to stop using the word we. Do yes, I have you to do. really stop doing New that? Bedford. New Bedford. At New Bedford. And at then, Milford. Our next game home is October 7th against KP. We can't even go over to Milford and do a game over there, for goodness sake. Milford sakes. broadcasts the game on WMRC and on their cable channel. All right. All right. I'm Paul Healy. He's Michael Healy. Dave Angel on camera. Peter Bray on graphics. Jim Jones, our engineer in charge. Thank you so much for joining us on Double ACS 15 Sports and 1320 WARA. Attleboro wins 27-20. The Angels listened in. You're listening to WARA 1320 AM Attleboro.